good. Look, the guy over there says I'm okay. So, hey, welcome back. We were having an awesome conversation before this started. Really, the show should have just been recorded before it was recorded. So today I have two people with me. Um, John Scent from Cedar Valley Outfitters. Other dangerous John Scent. Dangerous. And, <laughs> I've I've named him. Yes, and uh, that's uh, interesting. Officially, but everybody's got to have a name, man. That's your name. <laughs> yes. He will officially his J two because we have two Johns. He's J two. All right. Well, that's good and, too. I like dangerous though. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous John J two. Dangerous, dangerous J two. Exactly. It's like R two J two. So, yeah. um, <laughs> otherwise he'd probably be known as the whipping post at Cedar Valley Outfitters. <laughs> Whoops. Yes. Ah. He used to like it when he started there. <clears throat> everybody gets jaded. Everybody gets everybody gets jaded. J Tude. Everybody gets J Tude. <laughs> yes. All right. So, John, welcome. I Hello know you're there. twirling. You're not. You're twirling your thumbs because you're nervous. Let's just get that out to the public. John's nervous. He doesn't need to be. Um, Mike, just imagine everybody <laughs> naked. That's yes. what they always say, right? <laughs> imagine me naked. I right do now. not want to imagine either one of you two oh. naked at all. Wow. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, that was a test. Good job. Good answer. <laughs> all right. So, um, Gibson, maybe. I don't know. Oh, God. You guys all heard it. Don't tease Gibson. You got three hours sleep because you were where? What did you do last I, night? I was at work last night. What work? Can you say? Yeah. You're well, not like regular... one of these people on House Hunters where you're like, I work for a man. I can tell you if I black out my eyes and, you know, okay. a little strippy thing. No, I was at work at the ambulance last night. All right. Doing stuff. Cool. All right, so it was cold. I'll let you know. Yeah, I I believe you that it's cold. Not as cold as like twenty below cold, but well, it's quite a temperature change. Not to get all like weathery on you, but when temperature change that much, it feels like it's twenty below. I understand. Yes, but you don't freeze solid in fourteen minutes. Like no, you're right about that. Below. You're right about that. All right, and John, welcome back from the shot show. Yes, sir. Shot yes. show. Shot show slash uh, adult movie industry award show. But you didn't go to that. No, I did not. Oh, okay, all right. Just your wife told me Liar. to ask you. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. Um, so, what was it like in general? First thoughts, the small overview. As um, his first time, yeah. like attendee. If you had to describe it in five words, now you're trying to count how many words is five, but overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Lots of walking. <laughs> that, that's well, four, see. right? Yeah, there you just burned it up. That's four. Yeah. And um, cool. All right. Cool. Cool. Oh, you went with cool. You didn't even say tactical. Um, oh, was that the too? funny thing is day one, you know, not that I'm your dad and all, but on day one, we thought you died because you, you're the king of, uh, being on social media or you do 90% of your communications by text and you wouldn't answer anything. So I figured you were either like being the gimp in somebody's like <laughs> case somewhere, you know, chest, or you were in Nye County or something, but your phone died. It did at the so end. What you say? Yes. But, yeah. Whatever. It was. It was dying. I did not bring my charger because <clears> if you don't have a charger, and have it in your pocket charging the whole time, I mean, it just yeah, it doesn't down. work. When they have like charging stations the, there. Or what? They actually did, yeah. but I never. Oh, yeah. You don't stop long enough to do that. Yeah. So you needed that Streamlight battery pack we have thing. Right I there. did not bring that one. Yeah. I brought it. We sell those Cedar Valley Outfitters. The thing I always forget to do is try to sell things. We sell really cool phone chargers <laughs> at Cedar Valley Outfitters. So first day you show up and uh, how's it kind of laid out and what'd you do? And... Oh, it's just a mess. I mean, I've never been there. I, honestly, I'm full disclosure. I really don't have any desire because. Oh, no. You, you have know, to go next year. I've been to conferences, not that conference, of course, but like you haven't that seen, sort of thing. And it's just. You haven't seen tactic cool people until you've been to SHOT Show. One of the reasons I don't want to go. Anyway. Mike, you would fit in very well there. Oh, now he's you making would. fun of me. No, no not at all. I mean, you, I mean, you, you like beard. patches. I do like patches. Oh man, so, patches I mean, of hand. There's patches and patches and patches everywhere. Nice, lots of morale. There's a lot of morale around. going on. Yeah. So yeah. the first day, I literally just got stuck in the big, huge building that had all the big uh, names in it, and just kind of walked around and realized how big this thing really was. Mm -hmm. Eighteen hundred and some. Uh, booths that uh, could be visited over those four days. Yeah, you can't even possibly get to all those, could you? Oh, uh, you just walk by yeah. tons and tons and tons of them. Yeah. So I uh, was just trying to figure out a plan, and I, my plan did not work at all that first day. That's what I like. I finally get a text at the end of day one. He said, that that didn't work out. I'll do better tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, did you set up a grid system or what well, were you going to do? That was the problem. Well, I you, had the started. App. you had the app. Yeah. Well, I didn't use app. the app. The oh. app is probably one of the best apps you'll ever find on the internet to use. Mm -hmm. And I didn't use it enough beforehand, and I didn't use it enough that first day. Um, but after that, I figured out I needed to. It's because you were stuck looking at all the thousands of hot women. 
Oh, um, those aren't at SHOT Show. <laughs> well, they, I, I tell you what. Mm -hmm. There is an attractive bunch of uh, females at SHOT Show. Do you believe that they're just gun bunnies? Most. Okay. We'll yes. talk about that later. We'll go into details. So... I just had a thought, and it oh, just escaped me. Was it me, about but gun bunnies? No, well, that's what made me escape my oh, thought. Okay, <laughs> but uh, what what this was your what downhill. was your favorite? Yeah, right. <laughs> what was your favorite kind of booth or thing you saw that first day? The first day? Yeah. Um. Hmm. One of the first things I I, I wandered into was the Sig booth. And oh, and we know he's a Sig guy. Um, I don't know if I am or you not, are too. but it was the booth itself was super impressive. Uh, lots of people working it very well lit, tons and tons of guns, tons of their whole product line everywhere. And, uh, it seemed to be, um, well laid out. It was hard to be able to look at, uh, all the neat new stuff like the Rattler and the P365. Mm -hmm. That is an impressive gun. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to even like it. I love it. As long as it works and it doesn't get recalled, I'll love it. Yeah. Um, I th They seem to be very humble. The SIG reps seem to be very humble. And I think it had a lot to do with that uh, P320 hmm. drop and I'll shoot you gun. It's one thing I've never heard described about a SIG rep. So. <laughs> no, but it was I, your I, experience, so I like it. Uh, yeah, it, they were very... Very helpful when you talk to them and everything, and they weren't you know, they weren't aloof or or snobby. Wow. So I, I would say that uh, not real car salesman y or anything. No, like that. no, not at all. Hey, don't make fun of car salesmen. I'm not making fun. I'm saying they have a certain car salesman's got to turn over volume, so they they have a certain way. Right? Yeah. So. No, not not at all. There was uh, there were some other places that were probably like that, but uh, so P365, you had to stand in line to play with it. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. So what was great about it? Uh, it feels good in your hand. Um, it is small. It's it's going to be a good compact gun. So what's bad about it? Um, it's not really out. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I haven't <laughs> shot it. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to go to range day the day before. So where you really get to play with it and, and play with all the cool guns. I'm sure immediately there will be lots of aftermarket tactical things like, you know, aftermarket trigger groups and all kinds of things you can do to your brand new SIG. Just tear it apart, put new stuff in it. I was standing there when somebody uh, came up and was like, and he was, I don't remember which uh, trigger company he was from, but he was like, talked to the guy, say, hey, Dave, can I just take the slide off of this gun and everything? Because they wanted to look at the inside of it to yeah. see how they could start sure. playing with so it already. So what was his reaction? He's like, uh, no, that's no, proprietary. No, or, yeah, they sure. do not want you to take the guns apart no. and yeah. everything. Yeah. <clears throat> don't be that guy at SHOT Show that decides you want to take apart everybody's guns. But. Yeah. The other neat thing was that they had the the military versions, uh, the M17, M18, or whatever, sitting out there. Those, um, unless they were kind of some of the early ones, they kind of looked cheap. Hmm. Yeah, and maybe yeah. that's a reason. You mean the Army they're... buys things that are low bid? Did um, they have Did they have dummy cords on them? Because that's how you really know they're the military version, like <laughs> seven foot long strings <laughs> to keep people from no. losing their weapons. No. Well, wow. the thing is, is every single gun has a little uh, oh, string it? on it. Yeah, that there. show it does. Yeah, yeah almost Steel cable. Yes, everything is cabled down and and stuff. So, yeah. There's uh hey, I did like the laughing coming from the other army guys. See, I'm not laughing at military people, but I like it when the military. Well, it's funny, like in the like when I was in Ranger School, right? And I don't know if I've <clears> told this story before, but we were required to be within arm's reach of our rifle or have it dummy corded to our body at all times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being a smart guy, I had like a thirty foot length of parachute cord as a dummy cord. You're a problem. And solver, I just wrapped it around the stock and when I wanted to walk away from it, I leaned against a tree and I had like a thirty foot leash. But technically I was within the rules, so yeah. good. That's cool. That works. Um yeah. oh man. What comment did I read the other day? Well we we gotta get through Shot Show first. Then I'll go <laughs> off on my uh when you're on internet talking to expert. So uh, did you just basically hit major manufacturers the first day? or um, A lot of them. The other things I was doing was just kind of walking the outside of this thing to see how big it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> towards the three What was it, like on day three when you were like, oh, shit, there's a whole other room? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, it was not good. I, it I actually thought Thursday afternoon I was going to have free to go uh, mess around. Right. And then I realized that the big, huge room on level one I hadn't even touched yet. Wow. And it was just oh. like... I, I was overwhelmed again. 
What was and that was the, day three. What was the ratio of gun bunny to tech to cool coffee guys? That's what everybody really wants to know. Okay, so uh, there's a ton of tact cool coffee guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, a ton of them. And while you're drinking coffee. I like coffee. And you're wearing black. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mike, what is a tactical <laughs> coffee guy? Well, the guy that has a beard and tattoos and some sort of operator gear on and a okay. coffee t-shirt. I have. Okay, I don't have a coffee t-shirt. I understand. Yeah. But I like their coffee. There's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with their coffee. I'm just saying they seem to have exploded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm happy. Hey, it's, yeah, a, it's, a veteran, it's a veteran that's done very well for himself. I'm happy yeah. for him. Not, you know, al- not always. Not always? Not always a veteran. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they just no, are. No, but some of the, some of the ones of you're referring to user. are actually. Well, yeah. And, sure. and, uh, now and you get, know, now you're getting all serious. I was trying to make a joke, and he's getting all no. serious. Is this serious, Dave? No, because nobody not. gave me the memo. No, I'm not being serious. As a matter of fact, I was going to say, we should be happy that veteran has a job, because I heard from some guy on the internet that they're the dumbest people ever. Right, Shane? That was that was a whole other subject. That's so a we'll whole talk other about subject. Later. You were on that. Uh, we were watching together yeah, live yeah, yeah, last yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess you, I, I hear what you're putting down. Yeah. I got so it. let's go back to... Uh, so anyway, what's the ratio? See, so he's trying to get... See, the tangents. This there's, is what we do. There's tangents. definitely many, many, much more tactical ninja coffee drinking beards <laughs> mm-hmm. there than hot... Tactical bunnies. Okay, so what do you but think the there's still a good... Oh, the percentage No, 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 no. Here's my question. What's the percentage of people there actually working to get something done? That's a good question. Um, Depending on the time of day. No. At the, the show, how many people are there to sit down, place orders, talk about things they're interested in, and do business? I would say 20% or less. There you go. But that could just be my opinion. No, it's now, probably about but true. But at the... One beer, of the reasons I have no desire to go... But after 3.30 on every single day, that percentage dropped to probably less than two. Mm-hmm. Because at 3.30, that's when the beer starts flowing. Oh, God. Sure. Sure. And, I mean, you'll just, whoever's got a beer at their uh, booth and everything, I mean, it's just, you, you kind of have to steer around it because it's just a party going on. Mm-hmm. Just a big crowd standing oh, in the yeah. aisle way and oh, hooping absolutely. it up. Oh, absolutely. And if you want any, like, serious questions to be answered, you just kind of go the next day at a different time. Mm. But uh, that's a good assessment from a new guy. The first the first day at mm. the beginning of the day is super busy. But uh, you, you go at the first time in the morning every morning because each day everybody gets there a little bit later because I think they're hung over from the night before. Sounds reasonable. I Sounds mean, realistic. Yeah, it's probably what that's going on. But um, so. so you hit the major manufacturers kind of on the first <laughs> day and the second day you probably I mean, I'm assuming you try to hit something you didn't hit before. What? I have I have quite a few friends that were there um, associated with different companies, but none of them are associated with major manufacturers. They're like small gear companies and whatnot. Um, so what kind of unknown or small company did you find that you're like, hey, that's pretty cool. I never heard of them before. Actually, uh, Dad, Ernie, uh-huh. was texting me some things that I needed to go see, and so I went and saw a couple of those. And um, there were some safety products. Um, one dad, dad told him to go look at safety safety products. products? Yes, yes, yes nice. he did. All right, um, like one, like chainsaw guard safety products um, or like reflective vests. What are we no, talking about? No, there was here? some. Uh, one company was Gun Guardian. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The other one was uh, Zor Products or Zun, uh, Zor Gun Locks. And what's Gun Guardian do for their free um, advertising spot? What uh, they have this? It's a retired police officer was kind of trying to figure out a way to make. A rifles a little bit safer mm-hmm. so what he had did was uh take the the grip of the ar and remanufacture it so you could just hit a button on the bottom um undo it and then slide it over the trigger guard and then you could lock that into place as a way to kind of lock your ar up and then also slim down the the profile in a is this for like house storage in a vehicle? Both. Both. Yep. So um, I thought that was pretty impressive. That was on uh, what they call the third level, which is the brand new uh, products that uh, are just coming out. And and a lot of the stuff that he was using was, uh, or what he what he had was all uh, just the very first um, concept pieces. And he said, you know, we kind of come here thinking that we were gonna maybe get some good and bad feedback, didn't know how it was, and he said they were overwhelmed at how much people liked it and stuff. When you That's say good. third level, do you mean downstairs? 
Uh, this no, it'd be the third. So there's a first level, second level, and that's where everybody's at. Sure. And then the third level, they call it the next level, and those are the up and coming newest products that, um, you know, it's almost like a, oh, what are they like a? They trying to raise money. They're not trying to raise money, but it's just it's trying to get their name out there yeah. or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Did you go to the basement? Um, basement, bottom floor. Like yeah, where that's all the first level. When I think of third or first level, I think of as in like all the main people. So maybe they second level. Different... Second level is where the main, the big manufacturers okay. are. And I haven't gone for since 2015 until the statute of limitations is up. But I'm going back next year. That's yeah. a few more years before the statute's up. No, no, I checked it. <laughs> the laws in Nevada are different. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, hey, tell me about you and don't be shy about offending people or whatever. So tell me about like asking people like Keltec, hey, can you oh. make some actual guns we can buy? Like, will you quit trying to invent the next mousetrap and just build sub 2000s that already sell? Yeah, that uh, can I, you make some more 22 Magnum rifles? I, I talked to a, an engineer and he, it was definitely not a salesperson. And mm -hmm. I said, wow, that kind of looks like a that's neat to see the the unicorn gun, a sub 2000, a Keltec sub 2000 Glock 19. He's like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. We make 1,500 guns a week of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, bullshit really? Bullshit flag. We call that a bullshit flag in our industry. I and would I was throw like, the bullshit really? flag. Is it being thrown right now? Where, yeah. where, where, where do they all go? He's like, oh, they go to the, the major distributors and everything. It's like, uh, I was like, really? We, we've been trying to get them for years and everything and just can't yeah, get them. Two and, a year doesn't sound like they make 15. And uh, he says, well, he just must not have a very good relationship with your distributors. Yeah. So I'm going to remind that that was Keltec saying that at the SHOT Show about my distributors, of which I'll call them all. I already have, and they just laugh. They laugh because, you know, they're still waiting for back orders and back orders that are unfulfilled through Keltec, who says they make lots more guns than they really do. Who's so, that again? Um, Kel, <laughs> snotty-ass tech. Yeah, gotcha. All right. all right. That's who it's from. But what am I going to do? Risk making them mad and then calling? They the won't send you any guns. Say, oh, wait a minute! They're already not send sending him. you any guns. Do not send him the two guns a year that you send him that we supposedly make fifteen hundred a week. Damn you! So it's just interesting that people uh, they don't get it when they're when we tell them something's hard to get, and that's okay. That's a gun industry. They're like, "Well, I saw one at the gun show." I'm like, "There's 110 dealers at the gun show, and you saw one. I mean, literally, you saw one. So good luck finding Glock 19 grip size nine millimeter. You know." Sub two thousand Kel snotty ass tech rifles. <laughs> what about anybody else? Who was super cool to you? Who was not cool to you? Um, call them out. Call them out. It's the way I, we are. I, I'm gonna do it. Uh, like I said, Sig was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, Glock was. Oh, I do tell. See, this is like. See, I don't. I don't want to get. Yeah, very, I don't care what you very, say. Were they very, we're a were perfection they very, dealer. Yeah, were they wanna... very Austrian? Austrian. Um, like a very, little bit. I mean, they very were very businesslike and brusque with you. They were astute. Yeah. Yes. Is that a way? To, yeah, is that a way of astute. saying it politically correct? Yes. Was there a um, line of a? Uh, there, there wasn't big any earth. There wasn't any earth breaking things there though. I mean, the 19x is cool. I think it's cool if people realize it wasn't designed for like, hey, it's not a Sig P365 carry gun. It was yeah. an attempt at a military contract, but they still need you know physical safeties for those people in the military. But anyway. It's a um, lack. It's a lack of trust. I, yeah. I, it really is. It's no, a lack I, of trust. I, that whole I, I thing is it. a lack of trust. I get it. They're worried about common well, denominator. Let's call them lowest common denominator or lowest common. Yeah, we're, lowest we're, of the we're low. We're talking about Joe Snuffy, the rag man. I'm not saying anything. Whose main job is to flip eggs. I'm they not don't want anything. him shooting himself in the foot because they don't want to invest the money to train him properly because there's just too many of them. So we got to gonna make it easy if there was somewhere out there a gun god and that's not joe, was, joe it's not john moses browning and it's not gaston glock but if there was a gun god that could see every gun thing that's ever happened in the past i wonder what's led to more negligent not accidental negligent discharges which are what they are manual safety guns or non-manual safety gun i'm gonna throw you a curveball throw me a curveball clearing barrels yeah well okay but let's go back to every well when we say clearing barrels are you referring to your days seeing that in the military or in police? Uh, I have not seen one in the police department, but I imagine they all work the same. But what I'm saying is clearing barrels, I believe, make people complacent. Mm -hmm. 
And so maybe they're not as aware of the status of their weapon as they should be because they're like, oh, I'm just going to point the barrel, click, go, and poof. Let's go back and remind uh, Are you referring to your military career that went from like the uh, 80s into 2005? Yeah. yeah. 2004, but yeah, early Did 2000s. Did every single one of those guns have a manual safety on it? Yes, yes. yes. I was just making sure, but sure. yes. I yeah. mean, I, I was at a, at one time, so. I used to use a lot. Uh, different weapons, and I just wasn't so, sure which ones. I'm only regurgitating what real military people have told me, where they're yeah. like, dude. As opposed to me. No, you are. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm regurgitating what other people are saying. Is when they're like, dude, you don't want to be stuck inside a Humvee with so-and-so and not have a manual safety on their gun. You know? Well, yeah. And no, they're like, you, do you realize that they shouldn't even have a round chamber? They shouldn't blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying that's true as in I agree. I'm <laughs> saying that's true as in I believe they said that. Yeah. And so my thing is, is, you know, again, manual safeties don't make you make a decision whether to put your finger on the trigger and pull it or not. So it still blows my mind that the military's answer is we need a physical on-off safety on a handgun. A handgun. You're in the military, and it's downtime. It's it's time to use a handgun. Shit's bad. Yeah, it's it's really, really bad if you got to get to the handgun. Yeah, but, I understand. There's. I mean, like, we've discussed how handgun training is kind of deficient in the military, but we know why, too. Mm -hmm. It's way low on the priority list. Mm-hmm. Because if you get to that, then you might as well pull out the old K bar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say one Which, more. Which knife uh, training? Uh, speaking of knife bit, training, is knife even training. The, is even less in the military. Less uh, of a priority than handgun. Stab them in the face a lot. Because everybody knows how to use a knife, man. No, no, you don't. Do you think there was? Um, literally, I don't know. Do you think there was more training on an edged weapon back in like World War II and World War One? I? I was just thinking that we're like sure. simpatico, yeah, right. That's I was a big just, word. Don't use yeah, big words I know. to me. You I was, have to tell me ahead of time. <laughs> when you're describing the show and the titles to Shane, you have to tell me, I'm going to say simpatico, and you're supposed to know what it means. That's Seriously, a different language. We're on the same wavelength. So, yeah, I think when they were doing hand-to-hand -hand and they were trying to actually stab each other, because the threshold for casualties back then was a lot higher than it is now. It's crazy, isn't it? And they weren't worried about... You know, once again, Joe Snuffy, the ragman's mom, calling their congressman, my son got stabbed in bayonet training. Yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, so what? We're losing a 1,000 guys a day. He's one more, and we need to teach these guys how to stab other people. Yeah, it so. is crazy when you look at, uh, you know, there's always sad losses. You know, even here in the States or off the coast, you know, a military helicopter or plane goes down, and it reminds you, you know, or look at the first casualties over in Iraq or anywhere else. How many people are you got backed over by a truck or— yeah. You know, so let's and say, I'm not trying to make light of it or no, be callous. I mean, no. every life is precious. I'm just saying the threshold was yes. higher. And no, I'm not. Their lives matter just as much. Um, I and that's where I. I mean, like, I want to throat punch people when you see, like, I've seen things where people say, "Well, yeah, that guy wasn't killed in combat. He got backed over by some other dude." And I'm like, "Dude, he signed his, you know, he signed his name on the line. He wore a uniform. He went over there and he got run over by somebody else. So wouldn't even have been not, there if he wouldn't have done all that other stuff. There you go, potentially." So, but when you look at how many people were being lost in training, getting ready for World War II and Korea and all that, it's just, it's amazing what was normal. Yeah. Like, people died in training all the time. All the time. Yep. I was just listening, I listened to a podcast, um, we'll get back to SHOT Show. We really, uh, we're going to come back to it. We're going to circle around, and you but we're kind of doing a figure eight. You figure out how to make Glock be yeah, really you think happy about, with you th We stopped at Glock. <laughs> yep. Just remember what you're going to say. So anyway, I'm listening to, I listened to a podcast, uh, it's the All-American podcast about the... Uh, 82nd Airborne Division, of which I was a proud member, and it's their 100-year anniversary, so they started producing this podcast, and I'm at one of the episodes that talks about World War II, and just even the training for Airborne and everything back then was just like, I would compare the training for Airborne School, which nowadays is kind of a, I'm not going to say it's a joke, but like anybody could pass it, really. I mean, it's not elite. Right. The only thing you got to do is have the the gumption to jump out of an airplane. That's the only. That is Mike McAmel saying that, not Ernie. It's it's not a leap. Okay. I mean, it's not anybody could as long as you're not, <laughs> as long as you can will your body out the door, you can probably pass the school, okay. right? Because because sure. it's not that physically demanding. Some PT, some runs, jumping out of airplanes, they harass you quite a bit. You know, if you're not a quitter, you'll you'll pass. But anyway, back then in World War II, it was more like Ranger School or or Special Forces Selection. I mean. They didn't want you if you couldn't hack it, mm -hmm. and it was a long, like, over 30 days, I think, and, uh, <laughs> like, they had one guy tell a story about how he fell out of a 15-mile road march, and uh, 
Did they pick him up in a truck? No. Like they would no. They didn't have a straggler truck. They're like, yeah, see you, buddy. Find your way back. He had to find his own way back. <laughs> this guy has heat exhaustion. Yeah. And he's got this rucksack on. He's in the middle of Georgia and he doesn't know where he's at. And he's got to find his own way back because they didn't care. No. You know? Yeah. So it's a lot like how we treat you at Cedar Rock. <laughs> yeah, so did, too. Yeah. <laughs> we we left him in the bathroom for two days one time. So Wow. <laughs> See, he doesn't even remember. That, it. I barely even remember there, that. that was, wow, it must have been very traumatic. There's some things there's coming a, like back a, to me. There's a pregnant pause right there. That's very true. I was like, man, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder pregnant. how those urinal cakes tasted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the big white man. You, you gotta eat. Yeah. All right, shot show. <laughs> shot show. We're Glock. Back. So Glock was a stew. So they were less friendly. Um, they, I don't care what you say. Don't they were it. very. They were liberal on giving away trinkets. That's good. Cool. Sig was not. Yeah. Sig was a little bit more pol- was a little bit more forthcoming mm-hmm. talking. Uh, they just uh, just kind of right. so just more yeah. business like, or they didn't really care if you were there. I think it was the latter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So and they didn't. I mean, other than the because they figured, hey, we got our customers. We don't need to like. I mean, they'll come to us because we're Glock. Yeah, they'll come to us. They, um, can, they can do that. Yeah, I mean, that's what the haters hate them for. But it's like, hey, they they. They have something that works. It's like it's like being the you know the New England Patriots or the uh, you know or being uh, Apple Penn St- or Apple or like Apple. the currently Penn State wrestling team. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not the Hawkeyes, but it used to be the Hawkeyes. Like when you're that good, you're the second person to talk about that. Like, uh, and I'm not into wrestling, but people are going, "Oh my!" Because it's an emotionally significant event for me. Really? Iowa, no, no, not not yeah. the lack of Iowa being good, but talking about Penn. No, State's no, I was good, but Penn State is dominant. So wow. if you become the dominant like force in whatever your particular area See, John is, John would rather talk about wrestling all day. Then I would talk about wrestling for like hours. <laughs> Maybe you guys. But, that's it. Wrestling podcast. You yeah. guys need to have one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Saturday night was not very good. Yeah, that was on the coaches. I know it was. Kind of. Inside way. information. It was on the coat. See, I, that we're just out. talking about how the University of Iowa, fourth ranked or third, depending on the poll, University of Iowa wrestling team got beat by the new to the poll, seventh ranked, not really very good most times, Michigan team. Okay. Which is very disheartening. Hurts. But anyway, hurts. Hurts. Okay. The point I was making was if you're dominant in anything, then you don't really have to look for new people. They come to you. Yeah. It's and true. everybody else tries to be you. Yeah. I was listening to a uh, MMA uh, show the other day. I listen to a lot of podcasts when I drive around. This one's called Grappling Central. And um, th- this guy made a good point that if you're the champion, it's really, really, ha- or really, really hard to defend your title because for you, every title defense is just another fight. But for the new guy, mm-hmm. the challenger, it's, it's at- like the biggest moment yeah. of their life, sure. right? Sure. So, you know, the attitudes are just different. It's kind of like, let's see, here's a lot. There's a bunch of other. Here's something that so many people hate. They hate Nick Saban. They hate Alabama football. Yeah. But you know what's yeah. funny is? Well, even, same, same thing, right? In if college, you go and watch. College, yeah. If you go and watch actual, real, like, the stories about him and his team and what he does and him personally. And, and I'm not trying to tell people they need to like him. Even I'm saying I didn't realize all the awesome stuff he does for other people. But, I mean, that's how he gets people to come to him. You go watch his players talk about him. And you know, how he helped them, but that's everybody, one of them, even my buddies will be like, you know, he never gives anybody else any credit, which I think if you watch him, yes, he does. He always talks about how hard his guys work, but it is funny how he, he basically got said good what, kids, good parents. Well, good he parents. said, he said what you did is, you know, we, we should be winning, you know, we're the champ. So yeah. like, it's not like he's not happy about winning. It's like, Hey, someone's working hard to take you out of that. So you're right. Yeah. But it's just, I mean, so Glock, they probably figure they got their There's their mark their market share and they'll get what they get and they're not going to really lose anybody. I laugh about all. I the mean, Glock you got a haters. tattoo for God's sake. I do. I have an awesome Glock tattoo. And so I you're laugh. always going to own at least one. You have to. It's like a rule. Once you get like... a tattoo, you have to. It's like I got my kids like tattooed on my arm, so I can't ever get rid of them. What's funny <laughs> is the Glock haters that just despise Glock. Um, it's hilarious. They take so much time to tell you that they despise Glock. Like, if I hated, like, I don't know. Harley Davidson motorcycles or something. I wouldn't spend all day on chat groups about it, telling you how much I hated them, which I don't, by the way. I like them, but it's interesting. So maybe you can help them with customer service next year, and you can work in the booth for them. Ooh, I don't know how well I would go over. I don't know how well you do. Either. I don't think I'm as polished as they would like me. Were they in suits? Do they look all no. executive protectiony? 
No, they kind of looked a little bit uh, wearing like nice. They were in the polo, the yeah. nice polo and the yeah. and the cargo pants or no? No cargo not, pants? Not too much for cargo I really were they don't wearing know. The, were they wearing the tan boots or were they wearing shoes? Oh, everybody. Were much. they wearing Solomon running shoes? No. Okay. I'm not wearing mine today. What are you talking uh, about? I've just noticed a trend in the in the once again the tactical community that you know I, I Wait a start minute. wearing. Wait a minute. Yeah. Are Solomon shoes good shoes? They are, but I'm gonna start getting okay. a really hipster and talk about like <laughs> I was wearing them before they became cool, right? Yeah. But are they good? So I get it. I used they... to I started wearing Solomon's like ten years ago because they're good shoes and because they're awesome running <laughs> shoes, and now it seems like everybody that doesn't even run is wearing them. You know what I mean? I don't run because they're like the, good shoes. Yeah, I'm just saying mm-hmm. they've become. It's, a, it's it's become a bigger market. Yeah. I mean, being tactical is a big market. It is. So, I think so, it's actually getting smaller. But see, I'm not in that business. Like if you want to sell could we sell lots of patches? Do you want to sell patches at the store, John? We are going Maybe to. Maybe people could I, chime uh, in and say Cedar Valley Outfitters, you really should sell all those patches. I'd buy a Cedar Valley Outfitters patch. No, not our patch. People want the, you know, Tap Rack Gang <laughs> patch. They want oh, all the Yeah, no, I'll buy monkey those. patches. They no, want I'll buy those. They want all the other ones I can't repeat I, in here. I, I want I want patches I mean, that mem- commemorate stuff. Those are the kind I like. That's I the ones he was teasing me about. I, I do, like stuff I do, that I did find an outlet to get really cheap patches. Um, CBO ones. Well, be that's too bad. that's the other thing. When people is, is all the cool stores can have patches and that's fine. But I try to have things like made here, like really, mm-hmm. like uh, you know, like our shirts and you know they're embroidered here in Marion. Yeah. You, you, have local people do stuff. Spend your money locally. It's a rare thought, right? Right. I mean. It's a popular saying. It's rarely done. But, yeah, I mean, if you want to have patches made in America, um, they're pretty expensive. So you're going to have to get them contracted out if you want to make some. Like, and most of the ones made in America are still made sure. overseas. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. So. We'll talk about that when we're done. So John J2 is going to have patches made. for Dangerous J2. Dangerous J2. I'm going to make that a thing. Okay. I'm going to keep <laughs> calling him that until everybody's calling him that. Hashtag. Yes. What's that? All right. Oh, now he's going to get out. Okay, so move on beyond your less than... I, I do like the fact that you threw Glock under the bus. That's fine. That's okay. He didn't really. He just said they were very businesslike. Well, that's, Astute, he said. Yes, that's yeah. fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They don't need to be doing cartwheels or anything. They were focused like a laser on yeah. their business. True or false, you went there to see what was new, or you went there because you thought Michelle would be in the booth? Uh, Both. Okay, all right. Who's Michelle? See, I don't even know. I can't pronounce her last name. Oh. I did she, get her autograph from my daughter. Is she a celebrity? Oh. She's a celebrity? I she's got, a celebrity shooter. I got her autograph from my daughter. That's cool. It actually did say No, I, she I believe you. I do believe you. I got her autograph too once. So, all right, next company. Um, I don't know about, co- well, okay, I'll, the company uh, between or something that, hey. Remington and Mossberg, oh, yeah. both coming oh, out. Oh, Shane, what? What? We have uh, one question? No, like, no, no. Shut up. Look, there He's you go. Laughing. There you go. Nice. Look at that. Did Changing the tag. Oh, him. did you do that right during the show? I did that. He's not. Well, you just got more dangerous. <laughs> did you Did you really think that he had it beforehand? Did they work on that beforehand? No, he just did that on the fly. On the fly. That's how we. That's how we roll. All right. So, so uh, uh, Remington and the Mossberg's new shotguns that have those magazines. Say the word clip. Clip fed. Yeah, mag. The clip, clip fed, fed mag. shotguns. Yeah, I, even there, I heard clip. Yes, I know. It was kind of funny. It's who cares? Move I get it. Yeah. We'll move on. But uh, these five, ten, fifteen, twenty round, mm-hmm. uh, twelve gauge. It's all the rage. Magazines it? for yeah. The and what's the and what's the what's the uh, so, focus of the? I mean, what are they? Is it for law enforcement or what's their kind of focus for the product? Well, let's think about that. I, like, I have how would a, no idea. How would a magazine felt? Uh, let's see. Are departments going? I'm not like kidding. Are departments going more towards or away from using shotguns? <laughs> They're going away. Yeah. And then add a huge magazine that sticks out that runs yeah. into like your coffee well, cup and everything. Fair else. point, but I, I mean, what are they marketing? It is it home defense? Tactical cool people yeah. in America that want to spend money. There right. is definitely there some. Um, it's definitely they're pushing a little bit more for the home defense. I mean, you can even get a shockwave that's going to or yeah. TAC fourteen that's going to have that little magazine on it, so you could have sure. extra five, mm-hmm. ten rounds. And you're going to be able to... Convert? Retro- yeah, convert. I, somebody Old asked. Ones. I didn't answer. So sorry whoever <laughs> asked a question in Cedar Valley Fitters on our page like days ago, and I didn't answer you because I don't know. They want to know, 
is it is there anything that makes the retrofit only fit the 590 series or is it the 500 series or do you have any idea about any of that yet? i think it's 590 at this point but so, uh, I, don't I don't know yeah i don't know what would really be that different other than is that is that what you that's saw it right at, there. look at you are you throwing that up in the middle of the show God, we should pay you we should literally pay you to do this stuff oh. so so that magazine was, fed shotguns was a big deal. Yes. And Remington had a neat little thing where uh, you could get another person and compete against them sure. for the fastest time. And the fastest person when you're against them won a hat. Mm -hmm. And there's big lines to get that hat. And then the person at the end of the day had the fastest time. They won an actual shotgun. Yeah. So. Um, Who won? I have no idea. You should know their name. Well, there was four winners. Okay. They all um, got hats. And and anyone who won out of the two got hats. So mm -hmm. Did you beat anybody? Did you try I it? didn't stand in line to do that. Okay. All right. I, I think one of the funniest things I ever saw, it, like I said, I've never been to SHOT Show, but I've been to industry shows before. Um, the last one I was at was a couple of years ago. I went to the ASIS, which is a security industry trade show mm -hmm. out in uh, Anaheim, California. And I'm walking around like it wasn't as big a SHOT Show, but it's big. And I'm walking around all these booths and everything, and I just look, and there's a bunch of dudes in suits shooting these little, I, don't, I think they were like laser trainers or something. It was, it was, it was they are trying to sell some sort of training device for firearms. And I just laughed because I've never seen so many Weaver stances oh, come in on, my entire nice. life. No, <laughs> it was hilarious. Like every dude. Like the executive protection guys, they were trying out for the Beastie Boys sabotage video, dude. It was like a, that's what they well, were doing. It could be, it could be. It yeah. was California, yeah. yeah. But I just thought that was funny. That particular, it's, I'll never forget it. Like about ten dudes standing there with their their Ray Bans and Oakleys and their gray yeah, nondescript suits and I'm shooting glad, in the Weaver stance. I'm glad you not to defend them. They would have lit you up with those laser guns. There, there was a lot of those laser booths mm -hmm. um a lot of training, training. stuff sure. mm -hmm. um a lot of range stuff but a ton of those laser guns i mean they're just they were everywhere did you see anything as far as the training stuff that uh maybe we could bring back here and use um that's for the you know we'll say the uh what's the word i'm trying to think of the kind of home business kind of small business person you know you're not going to buy a bazillion of them Oh, actually, the one thing that I thought was the neatest was this thing I sent you, where it's a practice thing for for the, the medical. Yep, yep. Uh, I don't know what you call it. It was a cube. Yep. So they just, they call. I've seen different ones. They call wound in a box yep. or, or or different things like that. Um, this this one was kind of clear. You could yeah. put a flashlight in it, so you can watch the whoever's doing it, mm -hmm. um, making sure they're doing it right or packing it right. I yeah. thought that was really really neat. Yeah, those I've um, seen a couple of those. I intend on actually. Let's do when it. I can justify the cost, I'm going to get one because... I'll buy you one for your birthday. Will you really? Because mm -hmm. I, I take one for my birthday. When's your birthday? September 6th. Okay, I'll buy you one for Valentine's. Let's like, move this up a little it's bit. It's like a month from now. All right. Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you can manufacture them, which I have. Like, you can make... I think I mentioned... How much are they? Oh, they're like 200 bucks. I'm buying one for Valentine's for you. Yeah. All right. All right. I think you can get them cheaper than that, too, probably. Yeah. Probably too. So it was that was a neat piece for for training them. Some some of the um, some of the uh, reactive um, targets mm -hmm. um, that would move. Sure. Or there was um, some more lifelike targets. Um, I think I'm just thinking of some of the classes that we do. Did they have the Jedberg system there? Did you see that? No, I did not. I mean, I they were big a couple years ago. They may oh, have not. Some, yeah. I mean, they're the big now, that, but they may may not be out as a new product. But the the Jedberg reactive target system. Is that the one you can shoot multiple times, but you don't know it's how the many one, times it's Yeah, fall it's the down. one that they got a computer set up yeah. to it, so they program the different targets like to <laughs> randomly fall down. Mm -hmm. Like you get it yeah. one, two, six times before it goes down. I whatever. looked at uh, it but wasn't it wasn't their name brand. I looked at another one that's out of the Dakotas mm -hmm. that I went to their booth in 2015 and looked at it, and it was same thing. Random, you know, run by a computer, random hits on what'll. And uh, that was a mere twenty eight thousand dollars. Yeah, I was going to say that thousands and thousands of dollars. When people say that would be great for training, you better be a million dollar a year training company to justify a thirty thousand. See, that's target. where Mike starts having better ideas. Like, you can make one of those wound in a box things with a yoga brick and a piece of tubing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's one of the examples similar. that. Uh, yeah, similar. Um, 
But I'm like, if you want to have a reactive target, what's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> If you want a reactive target, you just build a stand that's got a pivot on it, and we we could hold a string, and we could do the figure eight drill, and when they shoot enough, we'll just hit it, and it'll it'll go down, right? Yeah. Low cost solution. Let's right do there. it. Right. Oh yeah, there's definitely things like that that I yeah. think. Uh, would or be we just good. need to win the lottery. Yeah, just win the lottery. I'll put that in my business plan. In the lottery. Hey, one thing you did do good is well, first we got to see it actually come to, you know actually happen but you got us signed up you're going to get us signed up with north american rescue aren't you yes sir yes good job good job, good job. John. Ooh, way to go out there job. did you tell him any whiny stories about hey we sell tons of your stuff anyway but we got um, blown off i did give the guy um i showed him the email it says yeah, we're not doing it right now wait till after the first year yeah. and the guy's like hmm i'll give that guy some crap about uh kind of pushing you off and everything throwing away so, business well it's just so. different than the gun industry yeah. As in, like, the gun industry, they would be happy to sign you up as a new dealer because, well, it's the gun industry and business sucks. I, I personally think that it was probably the individual. Who knows? And not the company. It's all right. Because I don't think, I don't think, we talked about dominant, like, mm-hmm. people, and I don't think North American Rescue is, they're one of the bigger pretty, players, but oh, I don't think they're dominant. They're a pretty right? big player, but yeah, I just like their stuff, and yeah. you like well, their stuff. Well, they got good stuff, yeah. It, I like their stuff because it's, it's. Good quality stuff, and it's they package it nice. Well, that seventy five dollar kit we sold, yeah, it has literally like when I say the basics, there's nothing in there that isn't something you'd really use. Like everything in there is something that I talk about in my class. Um, that's in the first. Yeah, yeah. If somebody said, not somebody. If Mike the medic says there's ten things you need, the first five things are in there. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like that. And then you know when we try to figure out even right on, I don't care if they're listening someday. I'm like, hey, I wonder if I can just buy their stuff and build this kit. You know, what are we really paying? And you probably it's not. can't do it for you cheaper. Can't. It's no. a great deal. It's yeah. basically like getting a really nice medical bag for like six dollars. Yeah. You know, so you can't beat it. It was yeah. nice, and that was already with the little, you know, um, pouch on there that says medical stuff, even though it's red. It had the pouch, but yeah. or the little patch. I mean, yeah. Um, no, it's a great deal. I'm gonna sell a ton of them. Yeah, they're they're very very popular, and that's just the one one of the many one things thing. they sell, right? Yeah. So it'd be good if you guys orange become, tourniquets. Yeah, I mean, and there's I mean. there's a you know pros and cons to having orange tourniquets. I mean, if just for your regular everyday civilian person, they're probably awesome because well, you can really see them, sure. and see what's going on. Yes, right? if your tax cool, you don't want to. Yeah, I mean, maybe if I'm maybe if I'm the SWAT the team, I don't want to yeah, put an orange one on. That. But I mean, if it's just you and me, like well, I don't care what color it is. Cool. All right, tactical. Tactical. All oh, right. Yeah, there any... was there was quite a few medical things out there. Um, was what were those I, booths as busy as the other booths? No, it wasn't hard. I, to, I wouldn't say that. But there, there was a, there did there was a, quite a few of them. Um, what I was looking mainly for was for the ankle bands. Yeah, and um, there is some good lower priced options for ankle bands. Um, the one that we sell is not. I mean that that is probably the highest quality I've. I mean, sure. I, I mean, I did not see anything but not that's everybody's close to gonna, that quality. Nobody's, not everybody wants higher quality. No. Yeah. They don't. I, I they put say on, they do, but they don't. I mean, there's. I've looked at, you know, you guys know, I yeah. goof around and, and look up that stuff. I've seen everything from, like, I'll call them out, Uncle Mike's quality stuff. Sure. Not that they make that, but, like, yeah. an, or ankle medical sure. pouches that are, like, I've that seen quality. 20, I've seen $20 ones online. Yeah. And then all the way up to, like, I really do think the one that you sell, uh, the Safer Faster First Responder, is probably the best quality one that I've seen. You could almost lift somebody up by one of those. That Velcro is so strong. Yeah. Yeah. I wear, I, I wear it every freaking day, man. Got it on right now? Right there. Right. Oh, mine's tactical green. Tactical green. Yeah. I tried on probably six or seven, and um, none of them are as high quality as the ones that we sell, but... I will say that there's some ones that'll just that'll work. Yeah, and I mean, that's yeah. work that that's the other thing too is you need the ton less money. You do need things that'll it'll do the job. Yeah, like, yes. Yeah, if I, if yeah. you can find me a twenty five dollar one, and I can get more people to wear them because they're twenty five dollars. Well, honestly, I mean, let's be honest. You're not going to honestly. Let's be honest. Or honestly, dishonestly, let's be honest. No, not dishonestly. Let's be honest. You are the most attractive man I've ever seen wow. in my life. There. Wow. Dishonestly, let's be honest. Wow. <laughs> That's what like about Gibson would three say about a curveball. <laughs> All right, let's talk about medical right, gear. Let's, ankle bands. let's just talk about like honestly. Okay. That uh, you know, you're not gonna put a lot of wear and tear on those things. So no. even one that's a little bit cheaper is gonna last a long time. Yeah. I mean, because it's maybe sits you got on your ankle, and, right? And maybe you buy one every two years if you buy a cheap one. If that, yeah. Oh. 
the the one I originally bought, uh, I bought it from Rescue Essentials, I think. But I've I su- had it like I support my friends, so I buy those, and it's good, right? So I mean, if I, I've stuff had it like good. I've had it like five years, and it's mm. still good to go. But I don't wear it hardly at all anymore either because I wear the other one. Yeah, Rescue Essentials was the oh, one hey, I liked look, probably the most. Eric, what? Oh, for the yeah. price. Why did Why does Eric have to ask questions? It always requires it's, like thinking. Let's answer Nate's question first. Is shot shot show open to the public? You got to have a dealer, like some sort of affiliation. You right? either have to be a dealer, or there is a law enforcement only, or I should say, there's a law enforcement. You can get in if you represent your department and you make purchases for them, or blah 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 blah. Basically, there's a bazillion cops here. Because I mean, it's supposedly supposedly an industry show. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the cops there aren't really to buy anything. No. They like to go in there, right? They're, True. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, there's not three people from one small department that are making all the buying decisions. But they were at SHOT Show together, but weren't they? They were all together. And Drinking I mean, them up. And they so. were taking selfies with the helicopters that have, you know, like rocket launchers on the side. Well, that was cool. They do need one of those in small town Iowa. That that's that was the biggest yes. bearded um, yes. coffee place. There you go. The helicopters? The helicopter one. Yeah, I'm sure. And don't get me wrong, it was probably one of my favorite ones. Did everybody working in that part of the booth already have their eyes blacked out? No, but there sure were a lot of... That's where a lot of attack the bunnies were, because they were serving all the coffee. Yeah, of course. Uh, It really would be funny for a booth at the SHOT Show to just go all the way and have the black band. Just own it? Yeah, just own it. Just own it and walk around like that. I can talk to you about the product, but you're not allowed to know who I am. (laughs) That'd be awesome. So no, Let's answer some questions. All right. Wow. There's only four questions. My That's ears. All right. How my ears? Yeah. I'm I don't here. know what we upset Mike with, but I'm sure he's just being funny. Tori isn't there anymore, which is very sad. I agree with you, Michael. Not that I know what you're talking about. I but did not see her. I'm very, but very sad. She wasn't at the clock booth. Yeah. Top Gun Tori. Is she allowed to be called Top Gun Tori anymore when you don't? Whatever. Why wouldn't she? No, I don't know. That was like like like. That's not a registered trademark for Glock, is it? Neither is the word Super Bowl, right? But it, yet it is. I think. Are it you is. allowed to say Super Bowl? Yeah, they don't like it when you say Super Bowl. I had to think about Super it a minute. Bowl, I'm Super like, Bowl. am I allowed? To? Yeah. Oh Super no, Bowl. you were talking about the other day too, though. But yeah, it's a big yeah. game. Like Super Bowl. They get all upset about that. Yeah. 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 If I have a bowl full of awesome popcorn, I might look at it and say that's a Super Bowl. That bowl is super. It's a Super Bowl. Yeah. Anyway, so HF twenty seventy five. I don't know, Eric. What's it about? Which one is that? Is that going to be? Uh, he said, "Look it up." So we know. I'm looking it up. There you go. Is he probably talking about uh, the Socom dudes thing? So, is he talking about the oh. the one where you cannot, where that uh, one whatever legislature here in Iowa legislator here in Iowa is trying There's to bloody box. make it so you can't? Yeah, it's going to be the Socom dude out of uh, Johnson County, probably whatever. Yeah. HF twenty seventy five. La di da di da. Okay, That's okay. cancer treatment. Well, right? you know, some of the politicians. That was 2009 and 2011. Yeah. There's a long pause here. An act, an act manufacturing the prohibiting possession Bump shipment stocks, of. It? It's hard to read on my phone. An act prohibiting the manufacture, position, shipment, transportation, or receipt of a multi-burst trigger activator yeah. and bump providing stocks. bump stock. It's the bump stock thing. All right. So what do I think of it? It's a joke. <laughs> um. I literally, I said this the other day, is, you know what, and here's, here, I'm going to talk out of both sides of my mouth. Do I own a bump, bump stock? There, might, there actually might even be bump stocks. Some of those guys are going to go crazy. There might be some that I think I own that are laying in a box in my back room I don't even use. No, there's not. Because I, you would have taken them? I would have found them. Not the box you know about. <laughs> and there's definitely one in my basement. Secret I took box. off my kid's AK, you know. So... Are they fun? Cool? Sure. Um, would I use them on a serious defensive rifle? No. Good luck trying to make them run when you're uh, not standing with a perfect stance on the range or know that you're about to fire a bump stock. Um, do I think it makes a person evil? No. I mean, it's it's a cliche, but it's so true. So some cliches are true, right? Evil is in your heart, not in your hand. So having a bump stock or no bump stock isn't going to make you decide whether you're going to go and kill people. <laughs> And then everyone will say, but you can kill more people. No. I mean, if we're going to talk about numbers of people killed, there's ways to do. So is this Bill and the other one I saw where... This is the Iowa version. Right. This is the Iowa version. This this Iowa bill and then the other bill I saw, another legislator is trying to 
uh, make the no gun signs and businesses have the force of law like it yes. does in like Texas and sure. some other places, yep. which we don't currently have in Iowa. Because why? Because oh, we don't ooh. need it. Do you want to make some people right? really mad? We could talk about that. I mean, do you do you think that stuff's more feel good? Of They're just like, it's... hey, look at me, I'm doing something about the evil of guns, or like it's really going to do anything. No, I I even made a post the other day. It, banning bump stocks in Iowa isn't going to save anybody, you know. And I think my comment was, or something is, why don't you look at the fact? So here's where Shot Show just went off onto a tangent. Hang on, John. It's gonna, it's gonna Helicopter, tactical coffee, go. guys. Hang just on. Remember that. That's where we're at. Yep. Um, here's the real problems. Like, let's say soon, and this isn't like secret. This isn't Ernie knows something. This is like, hey, take the time to go through and uh, take the proper routes and learn things. Like, hey, you have a guy who killed somebody in Cedar Rapids. He freaking beat him to death with a two by four. That's not a negligent discharge. That's a, I'd not, oh, I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, I didn't think my gun would go off. You beat a man to death with a two by four and you get 20 years in prison and you're out in less than eight. That guy's going to be on your streets here in Cedar Rapids pretty soon. There's something you could do. How about the repeat offenders who are out? How about the guy the other day that got shot that's the second time he got shot? Go look him up. So you ever been shot in civilian life? No, I have not. Pretty rare, isn't it? I mean, I mean, though, I, be- I believe it's rare. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we train for bad things, but do we really walk around thinking I don't know we're going to get shot today? No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of guys in this town that have been shot two times, let alone one time. And I'm not going to like lecture them about their life choices, but there's a lot of things our legislators could impact and control that would make Iowa safer than worrying about the 288 bump stocks that are somewhere in Iowa. I mean, really. Like, let's keep bad guys in bad guy places and don't let them out halfway through their sentence when they have the uh, mental fortitude to beat someone to death with a two by four. Right here in Cedar Rapids. Cedar Rapids, you can look that case up. That guy will be joining you soon in a mall near you. So, hey, if we say we're going to put people away for 20 years, let's, you know, be like federal. Let's make them at least do 75% of it. Let's have it mirror federal. So there's a lot. I'm going to stir the pot about that. Stir it. Hashtag sights on justice. You just watch. I like that. There's some things coming. Hashtag sights on justice. There's some things that are going to come lately, and I'm just telling people the way it is. Like, as in, here's things you can go and look up. And, and yes, I'm just going to say some names publicly and name some things and say this is ridiculous. I'm tired of people saying, what can we do? That always happens after a shooting, right? What can we do about this? Well, you know, you first of all, you can't stop every shooting. You can't stop a human that's <laughs> determined to go hurt other people. You know that, right? When people think that it's, it's as simple as uh, what they're afraid to deal with is a mentality. Like, because you can't. You can't law that out, can you? And so I always tell people, if you uh, look look who some You think of, it's a defense mechanism, though? I've thought a lot about it. Um, why they feel that way? Yeah, I, I I thought a lot about it, especially when I teach these active shooter classes and whatnot. You know, I, I make no bones about it. I say, look, no matter what happens, somebody could die here. Yeah. Like, you could do everything I'm telling you to do. And somebody... You could have the greatest plan in the world. Mm-hmm. You could do all the avoidance things you want to do and everything we... You know, and really all anybody's doing is giving you the best chance. Mm-hmm. But there's still a chance mm-hmm. that it's not going to work. So do you think people are trying to get all these, you know, all these laws and everything just to, you know, kind of push it off and say, oh, I did something and now I'm, you know, I feel better and I feel safer? I'll put it this way. I understand they think sometimes they're doing something. And also what they're doing as a human is focusing on the thing they think they can control. Because what you're not ever going to control without like the application of math and science and physics is you're not going to control a bad guy with words. No, You know, if you think passing a bump, I've said many times in the past, I get it. Um, you've heard me give the speech to some people about, you know, open carry. And when I say open carry is you got to realize the people that look at you and they're like, oh, my God, that guy's got a gun and they walk away. That wasn't scaring away the bad guy. That might be some lady whose husband took his life two years ago with a gun. She hates the sight of the gun. I understand there's people that blame crime on the gun because their family members are gone. The bad guy killed himself or got killed by the cops. That's usually not the way it goes. They usually kill themselves. There's no one left to get an answer from. Like Adam Lanza, right? (laughs) Sandy Hook. You're not getting an answer. If the guy was still alive, what answer would you get from him that would make any sense to me and you why that was okay? Or that, well, I can understand. It's demented and it's horrible and he shouldn't have done it, but I understand why he did it because of this, this, and this. No, there's no there's no rational answer. So you have to hate something. 
and you want to do something. Those parents want to do something about a gun law, about a gun. I don't make fun of them for hating that gun. I get it. Like, they have to hate something because the real answer will never be had because it's not here anymore. You know, the dude's dead. The bad guy's dead. So in Iowa, what I would like to see the legislators do is, why don't you do something about violent repeat criminals? Because those people, we already know who they are, and we know that when we let them out. Hey, look at your two Iowa City, I'm going to say alleged murders, okay? Because he hasn't been convicted yet. Two murders in Iowa City can, can, allegedly committed by a guy who was released by the parole board because they didn't think he was a issue anymore. And, and when I say parole board, I'm not going to say the parole person. Maybe the judge had a part of that. There'll be more on that later. But it's already well documented that, hey, we're going to go ahead and let him out because we don't think it's going to be an issue anymore. And, hey, he's going to kill somebody a couple months later and then kill somebody else a couple weeks later. Um, we already knew that guy was bad, so let's focus on those guys. And then maybe maybe there's people out there that say, let's quit throwing people in jail for only having you know, three ounces of weed on them or whatever. I yeah, let's know. let's let's allocate our resources to some of these more violent people. You I mean, mean you would, you'll have people say that. You mean let's focus on the thing most likely to kill you? Right. Yeah, let's do that. It kind of makes sense in training, right? So Wouldn't it make sense? So you're in, saying you're 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 down with the hamsters? Well, no. What I'm saying. Oh, I've never been shy about saying I don't care if you legalize weed, but it's not that. I totally feel that way. I don't care who you know gets me fired for saying that. I'm all you, about it being legalized. You can't get fired, man. You. There you go. You can't <laughs> you fire yourself. me. Um, I don't care about legalizing weed, but what people have to understand about that is it's not legal yet. So don't be an idiot. How many people have you run into like, well, they busted my buddy and that's so stupid because it's yeah. legal in how many other states? I, but it's I, not legal I'm with here. you. Once again, we're simpatico. Simpatico. Oh, yes. I, I'm going to go home and look that up. I could give a crap about people that smoke weed, but it, right currently right now it's against the law, so don't do it, kids. Yeah. And right. and I also understand the frustrations as in, um, hey, should you get high and drive your car? No. No. And is it hard to tell? Is it hard to measure that for an it, officer? It is. It so is. they also need to understand that, too. You know, some billionaire out there needs to, um, well, soon to be billionaire, some smart kid in his basement needs to uh, invent a breathalyzer slash. You hear that, Jay? Yes. Jay, you hear that? Yes. Perfectly. It's one of the smart kids currently living in my basement. There I'm you go. trying to encourage him a little bit. Yes. <laughs> Go, Jay. So, you know, here's here's my dumb idea, okay? You know, diabetics every day or people have to test their sugar, you know, a little finger prick, right? Mm -hmm. Boom, wow, gives them an answer instantly, like, what's going on? So I know that there's people. Can you imagine the people out there that are stuffing their face with Oreos and Mountain Dews because they got the munchies? Are they going to be mad when you pull them over and you have to finger prick them and say, oh, my God, you put me through pain and suffering, all that? That would re literally exist, right? That's going to require a warrant. I know. I get it. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I'm just I I'm get not, it. Yeah. I, I, it's going to be but, a hole in the camera. But my question is, then why wouldn't all of them, if they support it, when I say all of them, take all these pro-legalized weed people, say, okay, here's the deal. Here's the bill we're going to pass. We're going to make it legal. It's sold through government entities, and they tax it because everybody keeps saying we're missing the tax money, right? Yeah. It is funny that these people that say it's so stupid I was missing out on all the tax money are also the people you can also see their comments in other places that don't like the government and they complain about police departments and stuff, right? Which way do you want it? You want the government to make a bunch of taxes? or People so, are complicated, man. They are. So why don't you just pass an entire bill that says, okay, here's what it's going to be. It's going to be legal. You have to buy it here, here, and here. If you buy it illegally, that's still against the law, right? Can you still get busted for illegal possession of marijuana in Colorado? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Is there still drug dealers selling drugs illegally it, it, in Colorado? It's still, like, yes. it's like moonshine, right? Yeah. Alcohol is legal, but moon, moonshine is not legal. But part of the bill should be somebody invented some magical little thumb pricker thing that tells a cop right on the side of the road whether you're uh, chemically enhanced or not. Because I don't want a bunch of people high or people drunk driving around the road, T-boning my family. Right. Cause then I gotta go all man on fire on you, <laughs> Greasy Bear. <laughs> Greasy Bear. <laughs> hey, we missed a question, like uh, okay. real quick. So, real what quick. uh, what kit do we recommend to go with ankle band? You really need to buy. Um, there's not a specific kit unless it comes pre-made, but you need to buy the things that are going to take care of your massive bleeding, your airway, your respirations, all these things. So, chest seals. Hemostatic dressings, gauze, a good tourniquet, that sort of thing, kind of in a nutshell. So I don't know why you're nervous, John. There's only seven people watching us. Wait a minute, we get more than that. 
I'm just kidding. We got 32. Michael John, McCowan. He lives in Texas. Helicopters, now. tackle bearded guys, go. That's where we left. Um, okay, I'm interrupting. Ready? Yeah. Because it goes in there. Did you go to the Brownells booth? Was there a Brownells booth? Yes, there's a Brownells booth. And did you go see their retro stuff? And did they have no. the roller girl there? No, I did not see the retro Should've stuff. Should have went to the roller girl. So, sorry. Have you seen the fact that they have like the old AR10? What is it? The 108B or. So somebody's asking, what do we think of the Brownells retro rifles? I understand that's very, uh, I would say that's cool right now, but it's a fad. And all things, a lot of things are in the gun industry. It's a fad. Um, It's funny when Cedar Valley Outfitters opened 2001, I will tell you that if you walked in the door with a Colt SP-101, the only reason anybody was interested in is it was a pre-ban, right? So you owned a pre-ban lower that you could go and do what you want to. Um, people would not pay you a ton of money because it was a Colt SP-101. So then you go to September 13th, 2004. The ban goes away. The assault weapons ban goes away. The 10-year study that your tax is paid for, but that's another story. So then, now anybody can buy an AR and put a bayonet on it. Remember that word, bayonet. Chainsaw bayonet. Retractable. Retractable bayonet. Because that was going to be my last question for him. Well, okay, so the sorry. point being, I jumped, SP one the gun. I didn't know the old school triangular M sixteen like you had, right? Yeah, with like the blood channel. Yeah. So yeah. everything um, that's actually Civil War, but there you go. I'm no, just go no. with it. I know. So a triangular, you know, A one uh, style rear sights, all that fixed butt stock guns. If you brought those in after two thousand four. They had plummeted in value. Like, dude, it's like you have an old semi-automatic Colt. Whoopie do. Mm-hmm. You know, you can buy a newer gun with all the right features for less money. So, it's funny how an old school Colt it crashed down the value of it. But now they're back up. Now, literally, if you have like a 1976 semi-auto civilian only old school Colt that looks like a Vietnam battle rifle, sure, worth good money. And Brownells was smart enough to say people are paying ridiculous amounts of money for one of those used. So let's sell all the things to make that new. So, what, what was the, uh, and I had it on the tip of my tongue and I forgot, starts with an R, shows my lack of credit, oh, credit as a no. gun, gun guy. No, you're not a gun guy. But the the semi-auto friggin' musket that... <laughs> it's called the what? Come on, Franklin Arms. It's called what? John? Franklin Arms. Oh, I don't know what it's called. With the I little football, like nerf, like projectile. I don't like, know what it's like, called. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. But the thing, the, the bad thing about that was... What's is it called? That, it starts and, with an R. And, no, it's not revolution though. Everybody could have called it the revolution. Re- re- reformation. There you reformation. go. Reformation. Got it. Reformation. So the Franklin Arms reformation uh-huh. with the non-rifled barrel. The number yes. one memed gun in the country right now. Because that's the one. The funniest one I saw was the one where they had the stormtroopers <laughs> from Star Wars. Like this is why they can't hit anything. <laughs> They had the, the the bad thing about it was they had one of those there. Mm-hmm. Everybody went to that booth, flocked around it, and there was only one gun. So for everybody that you could actually physically. So for touch. everybody that doesn't know what we're talking about because we kind of didn't set it up, is this thing was kind of the four shot show put out there as a way to get around the short barreled rifle. This is, this is a short barrel rifle that is not a rifle yeah, because so, it's not a rifle barrel. Because it's not it, a rifle. It barrel. throws fend footballs like the. Like the Nerf footballs. Like it looks like yeah. a Nerf football. And yeah. I love that meme that came yeah. out, too. Yeah. Uh, the the guy that was explaining it to me, he's like, it just kind of throws it like a f- How Nerf football. He used the word Nerf How football. How would you like to be that guy? Like, all right, Joe, today you're going to sell the Reformation. Now, we know it's a short barrel rifle that's not actually a rifle, and everybody's making fun of it, but you go out there and you sell, and you sell. And he's like, oh, so here's the funny my day thing. just got really bad. Here's the funny thing is, is... Um, is it how I would allocate my money? No. Will they sell a bunch of them? Yes. Yes. Probably as a, what are they, um, they are a little spending kind of though. a curiosity piece mm-hmm. or whatever. Sure. You think? Sure. There's a lot of curiosity pieces mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Sig Legion curiosity piece. Yeah. True. True. <laughs> like, like you said, for people that have too much ways. money that just want to. There's all kinds of things out there. 10 millimeter 1911s. They sound really cool, but people don't actually buy them. Oh, look at that. It was nice of you to put that up. It's an 11 and a half inch barrel, like a short barreled rifle that's not. But it says no tax stamp right on it. What's the, uh, did you get any, I, and I haven't really looked at it. Did you haven't you, seen the ammunition, Shane. You need to see the ammunition. Did you get any uh, technical info? Like what's the max effective range or any of that stuff? It was, uh, they said something to the effect of four MOA at 50 yards. 
at 50 yards. Four MOA at 50 yards. Yeah. Hey, now before you go crazy. I can crazy, throw a rock. No, okay. With more at, no. Yes, I can. I'll, at I'll 50 yards. Throw a rock. Yes. At 50 I'll yards. Take that. I'll no, take you that can't. Bat. All right, right now. Right. No, you can't. Give me a rock. Yes. Uh, hey, you got to throw it. I want to see you throw a four minute of angle group at 50 yards. Hey, the rocks. first round. Is where I say it goes. Right there, that, there's <laughs> there's the Super Bowl bullet. That's not yeah. the Super Bowl bullet. It's the big game bullet. Yes. Um, but honestly, hey, do you need any more accuracy than four minute of angle out of a defensive carbine? If you're like in not the real a, world, not a fifty, but I mean, a rifle should do better than that. But I it's understand. not a rifle. It's not a rifle. It's Don't not say a rifle. rifle. Yeah, that is right. the bullet. Thank you, Shane. That's your Nerf football made out of. What was disappointing is that literally they only had one of them. Did yeah. they drop it and break it? Did I, you didn't, hear, I don't know about you that, didn't hear but that. Every time you go by the booth, it was all media sitting in their really cool four wheel drive, you know. Media trucks? No, it was UTVs? like, like ATVs yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. The media is allowed to drive around in those? No, they were just sitting in it, holding oh. it, and interviewing whoever the guy was and everything from Frank Low Armory. And you could never get really close creating to it. Creating the buzz. Hmm. Is that what Shot Show is all about? Creating the buzz. I mean, like, yeah, but it's I think been... Ernie's question was really, really good. Like, how many people are there really working? Oh, everybody knows. Or is it's everybody very... just there to go hang out and drink beer? It is and, definitely like... less than twenty five percent of people there really actually go there to accomplish anything other than the socializing event. And when people say, "Well, that is business," no, I'm not saying you went there. Like, what's fun for my employees <laughs> and me, whatever is. You know, you could be like John, where you started at the store, and you've talked to these people every single day at the distributors, every single day for two years, and you've never met them. Right. And then you get to go meet them at Shot Show, put a face to the name. So, did he buy anything? Well, we spend three hundred fifty thousand dollars with this person, this person, and this person every single year, but he's just never got to meet him. So, when that's still doing business in my book, that's no, I agree. Le- that's legit I, doing I agree. business. What you have mostly is. You know, you have the big dogs like, say, like whether it's Shibiel, uh, Shields, Cabela's, Brass Pro, whoever. You have guys like that. Like Shields is very organized. I'll give them credit for that. You know, they're going to shotgun blast, send their guys out all over to do, and girls, to do purchasing and look at programs and sit down with manufacturers. So there's that kind of business going on, but it's few and far between. So is, is the SHOT Show, when did SHOT Show start? I don't even know. This year was the 40th anniversary. Yeah. So 40th anniversary. So it's 2018. So I think it's going to die every year from now on. You think it's good? So that's yep. what I was just going to ask. I feel like as Did kind you? of an outsider, right, that it's become a character of itself. Mm-hmm. Like it's become so big that it's not, I'm not going to say a joke, but like it's trying to, it's trying really hard to be itself mm-hmm. and that it's going to explode and then it's going to go, not maybe go away, but break up into smaller like it's just not going to be that big eventually there's there's big companies uh how many people follow gary v on the internet and then some people are going to say ernie said gary v yay you know i'm going to use I one think of, that guy's a huckster yeah well no no mm-hmm. he is no he is. he's not he is he'll give you good advice no, but he, here's one of the things he, he tells you what you want to hear would you go spend a million dollars on a booth a million dollars minimum if you're one of these huge things you know, it, it'll blow your mind what they have to spend on square footage sure. to have a booth there, right? Mm-hmm. To do what? Tell people about new stuff? What if you actually went out and spent uh, $4,000 or $40,000 and had your media team do nothing but create YouTube videos and get to... Because so, ask people, where did you learn about the new Franklin Army thing? Did you learn about it at the SHOT Show? <laughs> Or did everyone at SHOT Show go to see it because they <laughs> already knew it existed? Yeah, exactly. So there'll, there'll be times where there's still, the, uh, there's still the old school thing where you want to go there and put your hands on it. I'm going to go to the SHOT Show. I'm going to go see the SIG booth. I'm going to do that. And, and those people will slowly somewhat disappear, the percentage of them, why you have the people that say, it's way smarter investment to keep my employee at home and have them do research on the Internet and learn about it. I was at uh, the CAA Hartman booth they do the the micro ronies the mic whatever they're called where you put the um your glock into this thing and kind of makes it into a little bit of a small carbine and everything Mm -hmm. and there was a guy trying to talk to this the the hartman guy and last year they did rated red did a video on them about the micro roni and this hartman uh optic and this guy started talking to him and everything he's like nah he, he didn't want to pay any attention to him and then he figured out he was with rated red and his his whole demeanor changed towards this guy. And he says Rated Red changed his life completely. And it was that one YouTube video that mm-hmm. had been played 50, 60 million times. I don't know what the mm-hmm. number mm-hmm. is. But it all More was, than eight times. Yeah. More than, okay. 
it was just, he said, it changed my life completely. And it was all because somebody did a video at Chat Show and everybody's seen it since then. And Sure. And I'm going to really go well. next year just to make one million little one minute videos. So you have to hold the camera next year. Oh, did you see? Uh, you, I sent you the picture of Rob Sergio, Pincus getting interviewed. I'm late. Well, Sergio, like, there was, uh, I didn't see that one. How many weeks late are you and have you taken a pregnancy test, Sergio? Ooh. Um, it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. Um, no, there was, uh, I was following Rob Pincus around and he had, they had, the guy was holding three cell phones. Three iPhones, all in a little holder, and they were walking like and a selfie stick. Yeah, it's but it was so, like but it, it was, holds. Yeah, and it was three of them, and that's how it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And gotcha. it was three of them, and I was like, "That's pretty interesting." Well, so, yeah, because I I do like the fact he sent me that my little my my Ernie picture, which is he sent me a picture of two fine young ladies that happened to be representing a particular <laughs> product there, and they were standing there, and he took a picture of me. He said, "It takes my camera." To make these women look good, and it takes three cameras to try to make Rob look good. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. It's funny. We need to have that up later. Yeah. Look, he's turning red. But I will. I ask him to do that. I ask him to visit that booth. So, Mrs. J two, he was just doing what he was told. So, all right, no questions. Hardly anybody watching. It's okay. We no, had J two on here. Saying that, man, you're scaring people away. No, we no. We have like thirty some people. Watching. I don't want to. Well, we didn't have many questions, is what I'm saying. Because we're we're just dominating their. I don't know. We're dominating. We're dominating. Yes. Share and like. Please share and like our videos. Yeah, we should remember that. Please come to our training we never talk about. Do Is the training enough? calendar up, been updated and ready to go? Look at that. We still have a lot while of time I was left. Don't we, Shane? Tell me yes. We do? Quite a bit. Something? Yeah. yeah. About ten minutes. Nine minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. Is that what we're going to... Am I limiting? Am I being limited? No. You said if you want to go an hour and a half. Oh, at least... We haven't even started Mike ranting yet. Well, yeah, uh, I, come on. I got one last thing on Chacho. Do it. Yes, do it. it, it other than I want to go again because I've got to figure out how to do it better next time. <laughs> yes. Um, Good. Hey, You're in hey, charge John, next year. Quick, everybody can hear me right now. Uh, John, Good. real quick, what was the app that you said you wished you would have spent some time figuring out? What was the name of the app? Well, um, actually, the, it's a Shot Show app. Yeah, it's a they literally app. have their own app. Yeah, yeah they, they build a, a lot of these places. It's, it's these literally Shot Show. Okay. But there's so get no one use. Of those, no use. Spend some time looking oh, at yeah. it. Oh yeah, it's got the complete it map. It tells you everything about every single. That's only if there. you're going to go to the shot show. Yeah. So other than that, it's useless. Right. Pretty much. Yeah. All right. Sorry, John. Go ahead. Um, what's that other website you visited, Shane? You told me earlier. I'm just kidding. That was a trick question. Don't, don't ever answer that. On. Um, the whole, the whole thing about SBRs. Um, yeah. I, I, after being there and seeing all the men, not manufacturers, but different variations of people doing. Pistolized, pistol stabilizing braces. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason to go through the paperwork of having a short barrel rifle because did you, it hold is on. so did, close. Did you hear the mic drop? So, so <laughs> I mean, I they, they, say, they, so if you had a lower in your gun safe, it is and a, Ernie it, it ordered is a pistol. an upper for you that's and Ernie uh, ordered an upper for you. 300 blackout. It's definitely a pistol, and you spend 100 to $300. It doesn't make a difference. They've I mean, they're retractable. I mean, you can make it into retractable a, arm base. Yeah, I mean, arm brace. There is so many out there. I mean, SB Tactical's got some really cool stuff. That um, I mean, just What's there's the so other? many people Sympatico? that are making them. So. What's that other one? It's, it sounds like something I stir in with fajitas. <laughs> it's like a yeah. yeah. You do. It is. <laughs> you don't eat <laughs> fajitas unless they're chicken anymore, right? We're very cultural, culturally like in tune here on the show. No, I'm just challenged. no. We are right. I'm challenged. Yeah. Okay. We I are. am challenged. I own a gun store for Cafe. God's sakes. Cafe. Mm, Cafe. Uh, John. John. John, what did you think of the Palmetto MP5? Oh, did you go look at that? Did you see that? The HK MP5 wannabe thing from Palmetto? Um, I did. Um, that was a really neat booth because there was two. Okay, more about the guns. Okay. Right. Um, I don't know. What do you think? You don't have to sugarcoat it. I don't no, care. This is a, this is a okay. good reaction, right? Because. Yeah. So the MP5 has a certain allure, 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 right? Definitely an allure. So I mean, we got you know the the, the military guys from Germany, you know the freaking Munich Olympics. Like, you used one. It's yeah, I've used one before. I mean, it's cool, right? It's SWAT team guy stuff. But mm -hmm. I like your reaction because it's authentic reaction for the average person. You know, they're like, eh, you know, eh. it's it's again, it's coming from Palmetto. I yeah. kind of question a little bit of their quality. I mean, they'll do. 
They build ARs that work okay. They do. They do. But they'll, they'll build anything. But this is. To but there's try to sell there's something. many people even before I met you, and I'm going to say I know more about it than you do. There's many people no, in the past. You know a lot more about stuff than I do. I mean him, but well, there's many can... people in the past that have built clones to the MP5 that just did not run flawless. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Yeah. And there's some people that won't care, depending on the price point. And you know, it's like, hey, well, you know, it, it looks like it's the same thing with people doing the retro look. Like, look at Brownells building or selling you the components or whatever, building old school rifles. There are people like you. Let's say you just had more money to know what to do with. You'd be like, hey, would I have an MP5? Can we say that and make it true? Let's try to. All right. mm, All okay. Right. I tried to use my simpatico powers, but it didn't work. Um, so the point is, is would you have one for the fun of it to remind you of the old school days? Having a little MP5? That'd be fun. You know, there's a guy in my unit that uh, like shot himself in the foot with the MP5. We used to call him Whistlefoot. <laughs> Whistlefoot. That's, you guys are harsh. That's awesome. He should always just play jokes on you, and though, and said, "Oh, I stepped on a nail, but I didn't." No, he's a really, really good guy. But I'm just saying that, that's how it goes, man. Whistlefoot. Yeah. Well, you somewhere up, out you, there, you pay the price. Right. Somewhere out there, he's gonna find you on this. Yeah. Yes. Hashtag, Hashtag, Hashtag whistle. Whistlefoot. All right, we're gonna start it until we find that guy. What's his real name? What's his first name? His first name, John. All right, we'll find John. John will find you, actually. <laughs> I know you, where he lives. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? Shoot yourself in the foot. Yep. All right. Go. Um, I, I guess we I brought you on the show to talk. Don't yeah. just sit there. I I really want to know about Mike's rant about Hollywood. Yeah, we do have rants. I I have All to. Right, we have are to we go done there. talking about Shot Show? We got like two more questions there. Answer their questions. Uh, Tom. Morris Next had... year, I'm going to Shot Show. We're taking John for organizational reasons. We'll make a bazillion videos. And was there anything really new? Or is it 90 percent hype? Driving sales only. Us. There there's some new things, but if there's something famous. If there's something actually incredible that's really going to change guns, or you would already know about it on the internet. It gets yes. leaked before SHOT Show. Yes. Yeah. SHOT Show is not a monetary... Uh, it's when people say, I can't believe you don't go every year. It's a lot of money, you know, because I'm not a rich business owner. It's why spend a couple thousand dollars to go look at things I already know exist because they're on the internet. It's a who's who, too. I mean, there's a lot of celebrities. There. Sure. I, I mean, saw, when you rob Pinkas, a, people follow you around. Like, with three cameras. With I was three. told to do that, too, by somebody. No, I said, go say hi to him. Well, I could never get a Did hold you go of look him. into the... Yeah, he's a social butterfly. Did yeah. you go to the Avidity Arms booth? Absolutely. Didn't you, did, you, did like you see this, my post that I, I put out there? I, I, yeah, I have to so act like they're So when's the PD-10 not, coming oh, out? <laughs> yeah. I was not going to ask that question. But it's did fine. you see a couple of those PD-10 models? You were all about the Stormtrooper one, weren't you? That was awesome. Yes. Let's talk about that for five seconds, nerds. Yeah, I think you're kind of a nerd too, aren't you? I'm there, a huge nerd. There uh, is the a Star, ton but, of Star Wars. Do not oh, insult my nerdness. You're a Star Wars dude? Absolutely. Okay. That rifle you sent a picture of or put a picture up, it was hilarious. All the people that said things. Oh, there was even some better ones too. I didn't get, I mean, there's tons of those. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'd, I'd like to have one. I'm, I'm not going to lie. George Lucas wouldn't be happy. Pew, with that. pew, pew. Yeah. yeah I'm so, not too worried about that. You're not too worried about George Lucas? No, he's, he's out, man. He's out. It's Disney. It's Disney. Well, they're worse. Like, we want to talk about patent infringement. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm just, I like You can Star tell Wars. it's Disney because now every Star Wars movie has to have a little cute furry creature. Yes, right? isn't that funny? Yeah. What's Irritates up with that? the crap out of me. Yeah. you got to remember, they started Irritate. with the Ewoks, dude. So. This could be a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, but they at least were functional, right? They, yeah, they were. They were like, at the core, they looked like cute and cuddly, but they were really ferocious. Oh, hell yeah. Like, they were stabbing people with sticks, man. Yeah. Yep. These little, <laughs> I like I like when they played the drums on top of the. I know, stuff. like they're using skulls. Uh, yeah. I mean, these guys are some yeah. little furry badasses, but That's now they the... got little like penguin looking furry birds. Yeah, like all they do is like make noises. Like what, I want what? you to have patches made that have Ewoks on it, stabbing people with sticks <laughs> with they, like blood already... off their teeth. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> it's all bandits. Oh yeah, we forgot about that before we uh, <laughs> before we uh, abort mission on the uh, shot show. Retractable bayonets. Yes. All right, you ordered them, didn't you? Like, you're going to get them and yeah, sell them. Yeah, I'm, yes. Knowing that you you even said, Ernie is going to make fun of me when you thought about this, didn't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But you're going to do what you want anyway? Well, on these, absolutely. Yeah, see, he Because does that. people will like them. They, they, again, it was a prototype model and everything, and they figured out a few things they need to improve on it. But, oh, This yeah, is why, why I have J2, because I, I'm boring. Dangerous when it, J2. It is dangerous J2. It's, it's because... Uh, 
I only want to sell people things like they really need, like tools to save your life. Yeah, and he wants to and, sell them stuff and, that he thinks they want. And he does need to remind me, he's like, Ernie, there's people that they don't care. They just want oh. a retractable bayonet. Hey, man. I mean, uh, myself personally, I just ordered like, my wife doesn't listen to the show. She's at bingo right now. Don't um, tell her. I just ordered like four more knives because okay. I need more knives. But yeah. I'm like a knife. Like It's like me and Imelda Marcos' shoes, right? Okay. I just... I just need more knives. Like what I said, that's a cool. I got a uh, um, a couple more small fixed blades, and then what was the other one? I got uh, some just random knife. I was like, oh, that looks kind of cool. There's there's a lot of knives at the show, and you would love it. Yeah. yeah. But there's also a lot of junk knives at that show. Yeah. 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 A lot of junk. Knives. I went crazy the other night, so maybe we're uh, what are we? Sympathetic. So how many days ago did you order knives? Like two days ago. That's they should be fun. here today. What, what what are you about to say? Because, yeah, you haven't even looked. I, I went oh. crazy the other night at like two in the morning and decided Cedarbot Outfitters need to sell more knives. Because I'm no, not no. Like a knife freak, wait, wait, right? Wait, like, like, I like might I, have done something at yeah. Chat Show that I'd like, we should have communicated about this. Well, I already spent thousands of dollars on a bunch oh. of knives. But Fixed whatever blades, you did, folders. you did. Both. Okay. And basically, I said, hey, not everybody wants to carry a $200 Benchmade or a $500 SE or whatever. So mm-hmm. I focused on knives that would be like 25 to 80 bucks. And when you spend a couple thousand dollars on knives that are 25 to 80 bucks, that's a lot of knives. That's a lot of knives. And I'm going to go crazy and buy even more. I'm going to make the him. The only thing, I, the only time I did spend money was at the Benchmade booth. Did you do our Benchmade order? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be important to communicate. Yeah. Well, so, I knew you wouldn't right. do it. What's that? I knew you weren't going to do it. That's hurtful. I could cut you right now with my Benchmade. Do you even have a knife on? Yeah, I have my Gerber. Yeah. Oh, see? Did you hear that, Benchmade? Traitor. Traitor. Why don't you just go hang out in the Celtic Traitor, booth? traitor, monkey eater. All right. Let's rant now. All right, rant. We're officially done with SHOT Show. So we already started Bayonet. talking about Hollywood, right? Yeah. How Disney has Hollywood. ruined the Star Wars movies, the Star mm-hmm. Wars franchise. Here we go. Let's talk about the movie 12 Strong. I yes. haven't seen I, it, so I'm I just going to listen. Know, and and just full disclosure, I have not seen it either. However, I will not go see it. Why? why? And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, here we go. Number one, do we know the back? Do you guys know the backstory? Uh, All right. Not enough as we should. So right after 9-11 happened, about a month later, 5th Special Forces, 5th Special Forces Group had a bunch of uh, operational detachments Go into Afghanistan with kind of a, you know, back in the day then, and, you know, went on to Iraq, same thing. Kind of a tenuous mission, really. Their mission was really like, just go in there and deny the Taliban this area Mm -hmm. and just make it happen, right? So these guys didn't have a lot of uh, guidance. They didn't have a lot of materials. We're in a place we hadn't been. It's, uh, you know, they call Afghanistan like the grave of empires because the Russians, the British, all these people have just been eaten up there, right? So... And they all know all that. So this this movie is about the guys on Operational Attachment Alpha 595. And these guys did some heroic crap, and it truly was, you know, epic. Not That's not what I'm upset about. What I'm upset about is the way Hollywood portrays it like they always do. They just they just never can get it right, okay? And and this, this may be relative to, like, the, you know, we have a— small audience mm-hmm. and there's going to be an even smaller segment of our audience that gets this but I'm talking to you. Okay. Number 1, SF teams have 12 people on it, right? When they're fully functional and um staffed. So you have two engineer sergeants. Remember I said sergeants, right? Two engineer sergeants. You have two medical sergeants, you have two weapons sergeants. How many is that? 6. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? And then you have the uh, 18 Fox was the Intel guy, and you have the warrant officer, and you have the team commander. I missed two people. Okay. Weapons. Somebody's going to remind you. Don't ask me on this, dude. He's the bagel guy, and I make coffee. Ba- so <laughs> so no, you got 12 guys, right? Yeah. Bagel? And uh, so 10 of those guys are enlisted guys. Mm-hmm. If you go to any SF group in the entire U.S. Army and you say, whose team is that? They're going to tell you the name of the team sergeant. Mm -hmm. the highest-ranking enlisted guy. And the reason is the NCOs have all the— the non-commissioned officers have all the experience. You might have guys that have been on that particular team for years. Uh, They've been on other teams. When I was a team sergeant, I had 14 years of team time experience, Mm -hmm. right? So those teams get identified, um, you know, by the name of the team sergeant most generally. And then the officers are there and they do what officers do, but they're generally there for a couple of years and they move on because they become 
company commanders, battalion commanders, they don't stay on teams, mm-hmm. okay? So that's the first problem I have with the movie. The reports I'm getting from my my friends and my SF uh, compadres that have went and seen the movie say it's very, very officer-centric. Mm-hmm. They don't even mention the name or the name of the team sergeant or even use the word team sergeant in the entire movie. It's all about the two officers. Mm-hmm. Um, once again, I'm not taking anything away from the officers, but I'm saying that's not the way it it's works. It's not the way it really works. It's not the way it works. That's not how any of this works. It's not. I... So you got so they ignored like <laughs> ten of the guys in this entire operation. Sure. And I know I know they got to focus on somebody, but if they're going to focus on somebody, let's focus on a couple of the enlisted guys. But it's Hollywood. Right. Is the lead actor the hot dude that's all muscly? He's like the Thor guy, so whatever helped. his name there is, you Chris go. Hemworth. Or I know. So, so make helped. him the team sergeant. I'm just saying yeah. they got that very, very wrong. Yeah. Um, it irritates the crap out of me um, that they... But let me go to the second thing that bothered me. Go. I think the reason that they did that... And this is the biggest move that that uh, this is the reason I won't go see the movie. So, when you guys think special operations and movies, what service or what group do you guys normally think of? Go ahead, shout it out. No, I don't because you I, probably. I go I, ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, it's the seals. Man. Right, seals. See, Everybody's I don't. Like, Navy seals. Navy seals. I don't think that though. Okay, I don't because I've indoctrinated you. You haven't no. been to shot show lately. You haven't been to shot show. Yeah, um, but uh. So the Navy SEALs are very, very good at promoting themselves. Uh So U.S. Army Special Forces guys, Green Berets. Another thing is they never mention the word Green Beret the whole movie. Uh That's a side note. However, we don't get a lot of positive press, right? Our last good movie was like The Green Berets with John Wayne in 1968. Uh We kind of pride ourselves on being quiet professionals. But, I mean, we like to get our our mission out there. Number, Number one. Hit single of 1971 was the Green Berets. It's going to be played at my funeral, by the way, just so you guys know that. All right. Number Um, one, top single in 1971, the year I was born. So so that being said, we finally get our movie, right? Our movie. We finally get a movie about some of our guys doing Mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Who are the technical advisors? Navy SEALs. Freaking Navy SEALs. I read that They part. couldn't find an Army guy to be a technical they advisor on an Army Silent movie? professional. Like, yeah, not even me. Like, there's like five what? bazillion isn't, Green Berets isn't out there. Isn't that your little motto, though? Silent professionals? Quiet professionals. Quiet professionals. Quiet. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So they, maybe they're so quiet they didn't speak up. Like, I'm sure if so they would have looked and asked, hey, mm-hmm. could you be technical? They would have found somebody. Yeah. Weren't you taught not to volunteer? <laughs> now you guys are throwing darts at <laughs> no. my rant here. No. I get it. Like, but, I mean, really. Yeah. They couldn't find a Green Beret that was actually like, <laughs> I bet you you could even have found, you could have probably even found one of the guys on that team. Yes. Because they're still around. Whose team was it? It was a Team Sergeant's team. Okay. But, uh, you know, you could get some better technical advisors yes. rather than some Navy SEAL dude. And and that's where it goes back, right? Because that's why the whole It kind all of, starts with your f- you having hope that Hollywood would want to get well, it right. No, it's just I hope yeah, I hope they want to get it right, but you have Navy Navy Seals as technical advisors and Navy Seals don't have a NCO tradition. Mm-hmm. Their Navy Seal platoons which are kind of like you can compare them to our to our ODAs. Um they're a little bigger, but roughly it's their smallest unit. They're run by officers, mm-hmm. right? So that's why the direction the movie went that way cuz that's how Seals operate. Mhm. Well, they screwed it up. Hmm. Irritates the crap out of me. It's Team Sergeant's team. It's the Team Sergeant's goddamn team. All right. NCOs are the backbone of the Army, Ernie. I believe you. I they, totally... It is. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Rand yeah, Dunn. Petty, petty Rand officers Dunn. are the backbone of the Navy. They say. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, I just have to step aside during all the military stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna give a bunch if of looks could kill. I'm gonna get a bunch of hate mail. It's I don't okay. know. I'm, I'm sure petty officers are the backbone of the Navy. But I'm just saying SEAL platoons do not operate the same way we do, so they should not have used Navy SEALs as technical advisors. Agreed. I get Maybe it. Maybe they asked NRA carry guard uh, first. Oh, to, wow, wow! Because the NRA carry wow. guard training is run by a lot of Navy SEAL guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's because cool. Had to go there. I'm just gonna start telling everybody I'm a Navy SEAL. No, don't do that. No, I won't. I would never no. do that. I know you wouldn't. I would never do that. I like Navy SEALs. Some of my best friends are Navy SEALs. I believe that. 
Some of your best friends are people that never did anything like that. That's right. <laughs> they just make good pizza. I have lots. Or of, good coffee. Yeah, I have lots of friends. Yeah, I'm very well rounded. That's one rant. Hollywood rant. That's, that's the only rant I got. That's the only rant you have. I mean, you wanted to talk about. It. So here's what'll be interesting. I um, Clint Eastwood's movie about the Paris train. Did uh, I? I think I read they used the actual. Yeah, they used the actual. They used the, the actual, actual people, guys yeah. to yeah. Be, play themselves. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And that's, uh, th- I think that's going to probably be a decent movie. I don't know how they can draw out that small incident I to make it, it in a movie going, like thing. I, I know. They're go- it's, it's something. It's a lot that, of flashbacks yeah. to yeah. their training. Yeah. Sure. Uh, still an awesome story, though, well, because, you know. I'm going to really get in trouble for disparaging other services. I'm being very elitist today. No, you're not. Those guys were in the Air Force. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Well, how much, how much, Force? How much training Ooh, did they did get? Did I say that? They, oh. they, they, the, I, what they got was force of will and mindset is what saved them on that Is trip. that what it takes to save people? Yes, yeah. absolutely. It doesn't take a good guy with a gun? It doesn't take a good guy with a gun. Yeah. It'd be nice if there was a good guy with a gun, but it doesn't take a good guy with a gun. No, it takes a guy willing to run at a rifle and tackle somebody. That's right, and beat him to death with their own rifle. That, that's the best part. I didn't really was... beat him to death, beat him unconscious. Beat him pretty good. Yeah. But stop short, apparently. Because now that person's facing trial, right? The, uh, the terrorist? Yeah, yeah I, th- I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he'll get years of justice. Yeah. Years. 12 strong. Well, no, uh, the one that you're ranting? No, the Clint Eastwood. Uh, 15 seconds? 15 no, trained, so, no, no, sorry, sorry. Paris. Trained 15 something Paris. Yes. 15, yeah. 15, 17 to Paris. Yes. Paris, 15, 17. Yes. There you go. So since, since, go. We're, since we're still on Hollywood, go. Uh, the one neat thing that I did get to meet at the SHOT Show was John Tig Tegan. From, uh, mm-hmm. He was one of the sure. contractors from thirteen er, from Benghazi. Yep. And uh, he's got some guns out that he's promoting from Car Arms, and uh, he was signing books and everything. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. I, cool. Uh, yeah. If anybody that was uh, there, I mean, Lou Ferrigno, Tim Kennedy or T- Lou you see all was these one guys. Of my heroes. Yeah, he's at Brown Ells all the time. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's up there yeah. in age now, but he was used to be one of my. Yeah, guys. he was kind of walking around a little slow. Mm-hmm. Is he? He's not that big anymore, is he? Well, he's was well, bigger than me. Well, bigger, bigger than, than us, right? I mean, the bulk. I is mean, he was still. I mean, pretty big. He's still yeah. a big guy, but that was one of the neatest things was meeting him. Hmm. At the like shot I said, show. most you, you people go to shot guys, show. You think those guys didn't do steroids back then? Shh. When we're not judging, not Lou Ferrigno. I'm I talking about I, John John T. No, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Frigno. Oh, I know he did. I'm sure Frigno and Arnold and all those guys uh, were doing stuff. Arnold. Sylvester. That's like, that's like not for my podcast. I don't know anything about Franco that Franco Colombo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did, what? Wingnuts, you mean? Okay. Look at, the only thing worth dying for. That's the name of the book. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah, yep. All right. Okay. You ready? Yep. Go More on. rants. Uh-oh. Um, no, there's not. It's not really ranty. What was it like four or five days ago when you said, "What are we going to talk about on the podcast?" When you reminded me, "Hey, it's Monday." Maybe that was like three days ago. Yeah. And I said, "Well, sadly enough, something will happen." You know, between now and then, we always say that between now and then. So, like, how many shootings or whatever? And and really, when I say I get tired of talking about the shootings, is we know that bad guys are going to. Hurt people, and we know that uh, crazy exes show up and kill their wives or ex-girlfriends or whatever. It a lot. So yep. it'll be interesting. I was just seeing this morning, like I told you guys, so I don't know enough about to speak of it. Somebody saying that shooting out in Pennsylvania was uh, an ex-related thing. So so is that the car wash in Pennsylvania? Yeah. So I, I don't know enough about to really go on about it right now. Um, and, and, and I'm a nobody when I say I don't know enough about it. I, I want to see what comes out, but, you know. Even like I say in class a lot, you have 30, like 2015 numbers, which now the 2016 numbers are out. I need to go see them so I have better, newer numbers. But, you know, when 35% of women killed in this country are killed by their significant other, as in most recent person in their life, that's a pretty huge thing to keep an eye out on. That's like the biggest bracket you're going to find of saying, other than saying humans are mostly murdered by other humans, that's a pretty big bracket. 35%, you know, of females being killed all by one group, which is, hey, this crazy ex of yours or the guy that you broke up with that doesn't seem to be handling it well, that's something to keep an eye on. can happen anywhere. could happen at your workplace. It could be like, I don't know. It could be like, I don't know, one of our employees' crazy ex shows up to kill her. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, it's a concern, right? When I used to work uh, 
for security company. How many times? We used to have a lot of, not a lot, but a fair amount of disgruntled employees. You know, they get mm-hmm. fired, let go, whatever, and they make threats. And and I always was a little uneasy, right? Because we had a no weapons policy in the building. Mm-hmm. And at your security company? At our security company. And, okay. I'm, and I'm the boss, right? Mm-hmm. So I try to abide by the company policies. I like you when you try. Yeah, I tried. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't always compliant, but I tried. But nevertheless, it was pretty wide open, honestly. Like somebody could come into the foyer and, and do what they wanted. Sure. And then we had key card access back to the office, but there'll be key cards laying but around. But there'll be key cards laying around. So that always concerned me. Like I was always like our security company should actually be more secure. Yeah. There's key cards attached to that first person you shot when you right. went in. And and think about so that's a security company, which whose job is security. Think about just your average normal business, right? Mm-hmm. Very unsecure, and that kind of stuff happens all the time with the exes and the, you know, domestics that escalate in the parking lot and move into the building or or whatever, right? Yeah. So it's a very real concern for me. I worry about that stuff uh, probably more often than some other things. It's people, more more likely to happen than some other things. People should worry about that. Smoke, you know, the smokers' uh, opportunity. Yeah, getting yeah. in the back door. Yeah. 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 You know, one time I did a security uh, assessment on this local business, and they asked me to go and try to get in the building. Mm-hmm. And Smokers just, always let you in. They well, got the door prop. So they didn't leave the door prop, but this is even this is even better, right? Mm-hmm. So this, this place is a warehouse, so it had you, there's only one entrance and exit, and but there was fire exits all around the building, like sure. doors that no handles on the outside or whatever. Sure. So I tried to get in the front using the old, hey, I'm delivering, and can I go talk to someone? They won't let me in. So I'm like, good on them. But then I went around and just started beating on doors. Mm-hmm. Just beep, 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 beep. Finally, after about the fifth door, somebody opened, opened it. it up. Sure. And let me in. Because they, yeah. And then I stood there for 20 minutes in the middle, just like in the middle of their warehouse with like forklifts going around me mm-hmm. and everything. <laughs> Everybody just staring at me. Nobody said, hey, Nothing. dude, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. Like, I'm going like, to forklift how, you if yeah, you don't right. belong here. How easy is it, it is. for people to get sure. into places? People need to, you know, sure. see something, say something. Well, right? similar thing, like I told you, that I won't I won't name names. Is it, yeah, we don't name names, so that way people don't say, hey, you can go sneak into that place. Right. But yeah. I went to a place, same thing, saying, you know, hey, I'm going to be there early for my lecture, and I'm going to see if I can get in. And if there's a big enough place, there's always a certain amount of smokers, right? And smokers, they love to do things like sneak out the side door, prop yep. this open. The rock. Yep. And they're all like, uh, the, they're all suckers, you know, where smokers are suckers, right? No pun intended. Mm. To where all I had to do was walk up, and I just walked up, and I had a cigarette, and I just did this whole, oh, my God, I don't have my lighter. And I'm like, do you guys have a lighter? Hey, it's another smoker, right? People that make poor choices together. <laughs> yeah. So they lit my cigarette. I stood out there and talked to them. And then as they walked in, being the employees slash maybe students slash whatever, I just walked on in with them, you know, and it's like, all because I supposedly didn't have a lighter. And they propped the door open the whole time with a coffee can. Sure. So, yeah, it could happen anywhere. Yeah. No building is uh, immune to it. No lifestyle slash social group slash I don't Security care where you are. everybody's job. It is. Security it's your is own job. job. Yeah. It is everybody's job. There's uh, been things that happen right here in town, and it won't stop. I mean, it's a human thing. It goes on everywhere. Other countries, America, everywhere else. So do we want to get political? Go. Oh, I don't normally get political, but so go for Lonnie it. wants to know about what do we think about the NFL not allowing the Anvils to to air their stand up for the uh, anthem commercial? Um, well, this is this yeah, is my opinion that on easy. that. Yeah. It's my opinion, right? Yeah. I watch the NFL because I enjoy football. Yeah. I don't give a crap about what they what, what they think about the United States, what they think about police officers, whatever. Like. I don't even care. Everybody, a lot of my friends were like, "Well, I'm never watching the NFL again." I'm like, "No, I'm gonna watch the NFL. I want they're there to entertain me. Yeah. So let them entertain me. They're yeah. entertainers. I don't care about their political views. I still go to movies, even with Tom Cruise as a freaking Looney Tune. I still go watch his movies. Sure. Right. So that's my opinion on that. So as far as that goes, NFL not allowing Amvets to air their commercial. They're a business. They don't want to upset people. Um. It's way more complicated than that, I guess is all that I'm saying. Hmm. So I don't I don't really care. 
I don't know enough about it that it's that we think it's as simple as Roger Goodell looked at a commercial and said, "No way, we don't want that." And that's what I'm saying. It's way more complicated. Yeah, it's probably more complicated than that. But do I think they should run it? Sure, they should run it. But um, you know, they the whole idea of advertising is supposedly as long as it's um, doesn't pick on somebody's race, creed, or sexual orientation or whatever. Why shouldn't they just take somebody's I mean, money and, and the run other commercials? Thing is, I mean, it's the United States of America, right? So yeah. the NFL is a business. They have the right to pick and choose what they want to do. Mm. And AMVETS has the right to pick and choose what they want to do. So they can run the commercial on a different station. Nobody's, like, yeah. telling them they can't do that. I understand. So, like, if you've ever noticed, like, yeah, I'm not brainwashing only one watch thing. But I watch Fox News a lot because the time I get home, whatever. It's fair and balanced. It's fair and balanced. Whatever. Um... <laughs> It focuses on bad things, and that's what I want to learn about. But if you've ever noticed, there's um, they you take don't like uh, to listen to NPR and listen about potato farmers. No, no. Okay. Who's the billionaire guy that uh, hates Trump? You know, and there's Soros, he's got his commercial. No, no, not no, him. Not him. Cuban? Who's the? Uh, no, 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 no. We Mark, know all the Mark famous Cuban? people. I'm talking about all the people you don't know his name. He has a complete the Illuminati. He has a commercial that runs on Fox News all the time. So if you want to talk about being fair, you yeah. know, people would be like, "Oh, Fox is in his pocket." You know, they're all bow down to Trump. They totally, you should see how often they run that commercial. As in, they let people buy advertising time on Fox News during sure. the breaks that says, sure. you know, this is going to have a commercial that says, I think Trump's insane and we need to impeach him. You'll find that guy's name out there I, I really haven't watched, I really don't watch regular TV, like probably for the last couple of years. It's a waste of time. It is a waste of time. I watch, uh, you know, a streaming service or sports, basically. Yeah, or keep you updated. You know, even my wife, she was like, some I can't even remember what it was last night or this morning. It's like Fox News gave me an update, or you know, check your phone because of this. And she looked at it. She's like, I, I don't care, right? Like that's kind of my yeah. attitude, more or less. Like I don't like the the anthem thing. I don't yeah. care. Like people have been doing stupid shit in this country for mm-hmm. two hundred some years, right? Yeah. Back at the Boston Tea Party, there was some dude that was like, eh, I don't think I want to be a member of this Boston <laughs> Tea Party thing. We should have dressed up like. We have, Something else, right? We have so, young adults eating Tide Pods. Right. I mean, so, none of this stuff affects me. Bigger problem. None of this stuff. I mean, I guess in some way it would, the ripple effect, the butterfly effect, whatever. But like right now, I don't care about that stuff. Yeah. I just want to watch football. Between like, you know, huffing paint and Tide Pods and people playing the choke out game, there's there's like might be a whole generation that wipes itself out here before we get going. I don't uh, know. Every generation thinks that the last generation is the stupidest generation. Yeah, eating Tide Pods. Did you ever have to warn your we kids? We had pet rocks, dude. Yeah, yeah. We didn't eat the pet rocks. Yeah. You didn't drink bleach we in pet, the 70s. We, we, we ate Pop Rocks. Yeah, well, that's okay. And yeah. then people figured out how to hurt themselves with those also, by yeah. the way. Um, we invented LSD. I wouldn't say you invented it. Well, that was invented a long time ago. No, the 60s. I think it came predominant in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Wasn't it, was probably it, invented, wasn't it invented in World War II? Probably. You're probably right about that. It, so it became... I did so much of it, I forgot. Right. So, yeah. The colors, man. Okay, let's go way Never back get to off another the boat. ramp. Never get off the boat. This will be the most controversial thing we talk about all day. All right. All right. Going way back to what uh, Eric says made he ask about. How do you feel? Personally, I don't care. Don't I don't care who you offend. How do you feel about... The it becoming law that when Buffalo Wild Wings says no guns in here, then you can't have no guns in there. Oh, that's what we kind of mentioned. Like, no, but how do you feel about it? I feel like it's unnecessary and stupid. Uh, uh, that's fine, but how do you feel when the law is going to pass? Because there's enough people that'll get behind it. Because do you they think, think it's it, going to pass? No. Do you think there's people that think that signs make a difference? I think there's a lot of people that think signs make. Do a difference. Do you think there's more people in Iowa that think signs make a difference than don't? I think there's a possibility. That there's more people now. That you think sound sides. like a politician. Well, there, there's a chance that there's a percentage well, I'm just of a saying, possibility. There, there is a chance that there's more people that think it make a di- how do I say this? There's more people that can, can be convinced that it makes a difference. Yes, right. Because they're not critical thinkers, and they'll just go with like, oh, that sounds pretty good, without actually delving into it any farther. Here's remember how it's I like think a whole bunch of people. Earlier, you and I had a talk, and I just said 2018. I don't care who I offend. We're just mm-hmm. gonna roll with it, right? Like maybe it's the what last year. Is it? Maybe it's the last oh, it's year. Oh, 2018. Maybe it's the last year. I'm in business and I yeah. don't care. Um, here's what's funny. There's more people that get organized on the other side it's than true. the pro gun side. It's true. There's more people on the pro gun side that whine and rant that don't really do anything. And about they focus it. on things that are not important. Yeah. So what's funny is, and I like it. You can see, go back and see it on Cedar Outfitters page. 
I don't mind, you know, and I'm not going to say haters. There's there's haters that show up there for sure, if you've been reading lately. But I don't mind people that get on there and have opposing views. Nine millimeter and, versus 45. No, not even that. I'm talking people that get on there and said, isn't it funny to listen to all you gun right people, all you know, ranting about your rights, but all of a sudden you don't want to give someone else their rights. As in, if John owns is I don't know, let's make up his wrestling camp school. He owns the property. He owns the building. He has to pay taxes on it. He pays people to work there. Why shouldn't we respect that sign that says no guns when he puts it on the front of his door? I, I mean, being devil's advocate, I actually agree with that, right? So do I. As a business owner, you have the right to restrict, like if you don't want smokers. Sure. I mean, they made it a law now, but before that, if you oh, didn't want yeah, smokers going in to there, that. right? But I'm going to go back. I'm just saying you, but, but I'm saying you can't legislate social issues, and I believe that— um, that's where I'm this, on. This kind of put, I'm unpopular, that, yeah. but that's okay. Is I, I I don't mind people saying, "Here's my thing." Is when when you say pick your fights and worry about things you shouldn't, I'm not going to rant and rave and stomp my feet demanding that I should be able to tell you that owns a business that pays taxes that owns that building what you can and can't do on your private property. Because when you try to do that to gun people, boy, they don't like it. No, they don't, and I agree. But let's go back to what I said um, before about. Uh, you know, people's feelings. Feelings. Right? This is a perfect example. So, number one, what problem are they trying to fix? Do we have an outrageous epidemic of shootings in businesses with signs up? Um, yeah, as it, I understand where you're going, this isn't a solution to violence. No. So, but what I'm saying is, we don't have we don't have a problem no, of but, people shooting people in businesses with signs up. We have problems with. Well, you repeat do repeat offenders. Well, sure. Repeat offenders shooting other repeat offenders. That's in in Iowa. I'm not talking about anywhere else. Everybody that so, committed murder and a violence attacks in Iowa broke existing laws anyway. Yes, they did. So they're going to break more laws to do so it. So what are we what are we accomplishing you're, you're by not making, accomplishing anything? That's my point. We're trying to make ourselves feel. Hold hey, on, I'm look, trying to think of their names. I I'm going to be something. Matt and Todd right now. We're going to play devil's advocate. Matt and Todd. Oh, I think that's their name. Yeah. Which one yes. am I? Um, no, it's just that you know, there's going to be a whole. I, I guarantee you, and maybe that's the other thing. When I say no more sugarcoating it, I'm going to show you some of the messages people send me at Cedar Valley Outfitters about how they're never going to shop there now, and that I'm this and I'm that because I have this opinion. I'm going to share some of those. Maybe I'll block their name. Who knows? But if they send it in a private message, then I owe it to them to block their name. That's how I feel about it, right? Sure. Yeah. If you rant and rave about it publicly, even on some other page, publicly on like a social media site, um, well, then let's make you famous. Let's talk about it. So I don't, I don't think people should be able to tell me, here's what gun people don't get, is they get all mad and say, you're it's all about my rights you can't tell me you know if you don't want me in your store blah blah blah. there's lots of people who don't want us in their store and when i say us someone carrying a gun they don't ever know that i'm carrying a gun because i carry it concealed so i can go shop where i want right in the past do i shop at places that have no gun signs up i sure do sometimes Maybe I need Caribbean jerk wings. I got to have them, yeah, right? I'm Maybe I'm going to go. B-dubs were looking at you. Maybe I need to go to Warenberg Theaters and watch 12 Strong because I heard it's the most correct <laughs> the most movie The most historically ever. correct movie ever. So Warenberg. So I don't want there, you know, I don't want there to be a law that says now I'm breaking the law. Because I always tell people in class, I don't care whose rules you break. I only tell you, don't yeah, break laws. No, I agree. You want to break rules, break rules. But on the other hand... If someone call is if I'm specifically told don't do this, don't come here, I'm gonna respect that. And and gun people get all bent out of shape about that. But in my class, like I say, it's as simple as hey, you know, John's having a barbecue. Hey, by the way, let's say J two. We'll make up a different person, J three. Is your wife somewhat uncomfortable? Not dangerous, J three. Is, yeah, is your wife somewhat uncomfortable around guns? Yes. Would a bunch of people at your family barbecue with your kids there and you invite over a bunch of friends and some of them are carrying guns, would it make her nervous? Yes. So is it reasonable that you would say, hey, everybody, I know you love guns and that's cool. I work at a gun store. You know I support it, but no wearing guns at my house that day. What kind of friend shows up and wears his gun anyway at John's house? You're an ass clown if you do that, right? You want to hear a funny story? If it's funnier than what I'm talking about, then well, sure. Maybe not funny, but interesting. So I was over at a family gathering mm -hmm. and my uncle was there. Yeah. Uh, who I love dearly, but he's not a gun guy, and yeah. he's kind of an old hippie. Yep. And we all have old he, hippies he in know, our family. He know he he knows that I carry a gun, blah blah. Sure. And he asked me if I had one on, and yeah. I said yes. Yeah. Because if you ask me, I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 
And he goes, why would you wear a gun to a family gathering? I and I said, <laughs> why wouldn't I? That's where family violence happens. I said, why wouldn't I? And he didn't really have an answer to that. But it was a kind of an awkward conversation. Sure. Like, my answer was because I carry it everywhere. Hey, now that we've gone here, we're in uncharted waters somewhat. Ready? Oh, oh! before I go farther, you're can, trying can to... I, can I uh, raise my ignorance flag yes. here? Yes. There's, there's no stupid questions? No. Nope. Uh, get, to get back to the signs and to get yes. back to this okay. law. Yep. Okay. Now, I have a concealed carry permit. I have a gun. I don't carry it all the time. Mm-hmm. But what is... I'm not... A, I guess I, I must have had a misunderstanding. Are people of, can hear you right now? Yeah. Yes, yeah. people okay. can hear me. Yeah. I never so, know if it's just in yes, my head. Right. Yeah. So I, I maybe I had a misunderstanding that when I saw a sign on a business that said before no guns. that said no guns, I'd get into a lot of trouble. No, not in if Iowa. I went in not, and I was not, carrying not, a gun. Not in not, Iowa. Not in Iowa. So now, okay. So how do you? Um, so it's only the federal buildings. So right? any, and Ernie, correct me if I'm wrong, but only buildings that have signs that have a code. Or a law like the number ordinance statute ordinance that says something. Like, those, yeah, you can get in a lot of trouble. Federal buildings, courthouse, Iowa uh, City Library. Iowa City, li- you know, if they've got a Iowa. law, yeah. but the B Dubs sign or the sign in the Wernberg mall, theaters. The, the sign at the mall at Coral Ridge that says, you know, the little circle with the no gun thing. I'm yeah. gonna call bullshit on that. Where have you ever seen that? I've seen it going into the theater just Tuesday. Where, theater? No, but on the main door there on the theater because, side. Because, again, you know how we have to call out people, like a whole bunch of pro-gun people after yeah. the shooting? Crazy Andrew, mm-hmm. who executed the girl that wouldn't be with them yeah. at Coridge Mall, and everybody said, look, another shooting in a no-gun zone. There's no no-gun stickers on Coridge Mall. I'll take Mall. a picture of it next time. I saw one. And there may be, there may be is as you go into the ice rink area. Yeah, or, that's that's the area. But one. there's not one on the doors of Shields. There's not one on yeah. the doors no, of you're right. Target. There's but, not but one. Anyway, but, but anyway, your you're point is, is, if they don't have a law or a code or something on the bottom, and you you're, might have to look. Okay. You're not breaking a law? They don't have the force of law. It's it's kind of like a suggestion. Like, we prefer that you don't bring your gun in here. Mm-hmm. Okay. But now what you're saying is... If they there pass is, that law. If they pass... Yes. The, 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 House file 2057. Law. Yeah. All right. right. Then it would be against the law. It would yes. be ju- just as enforceable. So anybody could slap up a sign and say, now it's illegal, like with... It would be covered as an umbrella under that entire law. All right. Well, mm-hmm. thank thank you guys. I sorry I no no in. we don't yeah. want you. So where were we? So anyway, here's the thing: is it just it drives me nuts that so first of all, when people start, uh, here's where I admire some of the comments that people make that aren't pro gun. And I'll say it, being a pro-gun guy is first of all, you always hear about well, then I'm never going there anymore. We're never going to spend our money there. It's like, dude. I go to that place. I've never seen you or your friends or anybody. And you're, they're not worried about you boycotting them. There's not businesses. They're going to go out of business for being non-gun in Iowa. Does that make sense? Yeah. We don't keep, I don't know, Zoe's in business. Yeah. We not, don't keep Granite City in demographic business. demographic or no. not enough people care probably. No. And when I say we're not that important, the rights that we have, the Second Amendment's super important, but I'm not trying to ram it down other people's throats on their property. Because that's how I, a smoker, by the way, that pays way tons of taxes in buying smoking things, I think it's BS that you tell me I can't have a cigarette in a store that I own. Like people, oh, I agree with you, dude. Like I, I think most of the ridiculous things I've ever seen is the little penguin groups that congregate out on yeah. the the sidewalks sure. just outside the property line of these businesses. Yes. I'm like, oh, that's way better than just letting them smoke in the building. Yeah, and and the thing is, like anybody that knows me, been around me long enough. Uh, I've never smoked in my own house. I don't smoke indoors. Yeah, I like to go to restaurants where it doesn't smell like smoke. I get that. What I'm saying is, isn't it funny that the guy that owns, you know, whatever, let's say you take a local, take one of the Godwin families, whatever, owns a lot of businesses in this town, whatever. Why shouldn't that dude counting his money at two in the morning after working all week and closing the place down, sit in his back room and have a cigarette in his office? But that would be against the law because it's inside a business, right? I mean... That's what should piss people off. Is it when Pisses they say me off. it is when they say, well, the government can't do this or can't do that. I understand how many people don't like smoking. I get it, but you do need to understand it's not illegal, right? It's not illegal. You know what else I don't like? It's about not illegal that? to buy about cigarettes and cigarettes? smoke cigarettes let's if you're talk an adult. About buying cigarettes. Let's do talk it. about a, additional taxes. Let's, let's throw a dollar on there and say it's going for medical. Oh yeah, like baloney. Bullshit what, flag. There goes and two. I know. They just and here's what I. yard penalty for lack of ethics. Why they spend time in every school telling kids not to smoke, which is great. I support even as a smoker, right? I support it. 
what would they do without all the taxes if people really did quit there's, smoking? Nowadays, 2018, there's nobody in this world unless they're like intellectually incapable of comprehending mm-hmm. the words that doesn't know smoking's bad for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so, so let people... So is eating Tide Pods. So, so is eating so, Tide Pods, yeah. and so is the ho-ho I had last night at 2 a.m. Yeah. Mercy, Iowa City, you guys are awesome. They had a ho-hos. That's awesome. Yeah. You just called them out and said something good. Because they give us food. Oh. It's they, nice. They teach you ambulance people. Yeah. And don't they call you ambulance drivers? Ambulance drivers. Yeah. I went to school for... Hello, doctor's you know, helper. Isn't yeah, doctor's helper. So we got a, one question, and... Oh, let's see. About the 2018 training schedules. Oh, it's Ian, which, yeah, Ian. Um, interrupt you, 2018 schedule. Well, we'll get it posted soon. Like, I don't know if he's interested in gun classes or Mike's classes or, um, yeah, whatever classes. Well, I'll get it posted for you, Ian. I'll even send you a message because I know you. So we're done ranting. Maybe yeah, we should I, just save more. Yeah, All I right. think so. Okay, Mr. Scent, anything else you want to say? No, sir. All right. Nothing? We're not <laughs> no, getting... you're supposed we, to talk for another 10 minutes. You don't know how gone, we operate we've here. We've gone pretty long so No, far not really. Today. I'm just now getting pretty pissed yeah, off. Get, now. Yeah, I could get revved up. You're getting revved up, but we've been oh, here a little while. Quit telling me what to do on my private property, all right? This so, isn't your property. Yes. Um, uh, so here was my last-minute question. You ready? Yeah. Do you have a gun on you? No. Come on. Answer it honestly. Do you have I a gun do, on you? I do not. I did bring okay. one. Do you have a gun on you? No. I don't have a gun on me. Why don't you wear a gun right now? Why do I, why, why do you have not it? have it right now? Because out it's out in my car, honestly, and I'm wearing sweatpants right now. Okay. I took mine off because you said you were leaving yours in the truck. Yeah. So the here's a funny question. You ready, Shane? Maybe people can or can't hear you. I've never asked Shane how he felt about guns in his house, so I never wear one when I'm here. Yeah. Which is kind of whatever, you know. Like, hey, we live two hours without our guns, Mike. How do you feel about it? I don't know. I feel kind of hypocritical. Or or I feel like I don't need to have the magic talisman to defend myself. Because I do. Have you you seen didn't ask me if You didn't ask me if I have other things. I know you have other things. That's fine. Yeah. And you have a brain. Yes. And, I and have we have, like, the wolf fang marmaduke upstairs that has yes. to get by. The dog <laughs> no who one's hates coming, us. Yeah, no one's coming <laughs> in that house. As long as this house is broken into by someone who's male, he doesn't have to worry because yeah. that dog's going to kill him. Yeah. You, know, you know what? Uh, I actually everybody can't hear me. They can or but can't. They can. Yeah. All yeah. right. But uh, some of the topics that you've talked about in the last few episodes has made me think about the doors locked upstairs, mm-hmm. the house is secure, but where my tool mm-hmm. to protect myself is it's not near you right n- now. Nowhere near me. I would have to go through the threat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To protect myself, yeah. and so when you guys. I, I've I've just thought only one time have I brought my sidearm down to mm-hmm. be with me because I knew I was going to be in my studio all day. Yeah, and I didn't want to have to have my back up against the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, you're perfectly welcome. All right, to bring very that good. Into, into all right, I just never I've never at, and so I understand some people's answer are if I've never asked you I could just wear one until you, you tell me not to. But, you know, when I'm around other people on their property with their families, I don't just assume I can. So, yeah. All right. I, I've well, lived, I've lived you, through these podcasts mostly. That you say that the safest place for a handgun is in its holster. It's never going to go off mm-hmm. when it's in its holster. So, no. Yeah. Not unless you have a really bad holster. Yeah. And if you do, go see CBO Outfitters. All right. Well, this was one of our least organized, perfectly normal CBO podcasts, wasn't it? Yes. It was very good. And we beat Mike here, which makes us early. We were early. No, Mike beat us, I mean. Yes. Other way around. Other way around. Yeah, what so. I'm saying is it was amazing that he beat us here. Yes, amazing. Yes. Amazing. Shane, thanks for your input as always, or whoever you are, mysterious person, army guy in the corner. Uh, other than that, check the uh, Facebook or the website soon. We do have some different training. Mostly you have medical class. Yeah, go see my poll. I'm, I've got a level two, I'm calling it immediate casualty care two, yes. a little more of an expanded um version mm-hmm. and uh, of my immediate casualty care class which has been very popular lately go in there get the poll on the facebook page it's i think ernie reposted it i did and let's so get some in interest. general if if it's worth i mean i'll be honest with you guys if it's worth my time i'll do it if it's not then we'll just move on but as in if people are interested it's like worth as your if time. The, as if they'll i mean let's be honest if I'm it's not, just me and john there you're yeah not i mean i need to make some money to 
to at least cover the cost of the training material. Oh, you sound so like an elitist now. I am an elitist. I'm a capitalist. You want to make money? Yeah, I do. That's the root of all evil I hear. It is. People that want to make money. It is. And then hire other people and give them jobs. And like let them feed their families. It's terrible. Terrible, All terrible, right. terrible. Well, I'm sure we'll go home and we'll think about 20 other things to talk about. But we're going to do another podcast soon, like within weeks. Two weeks. Right? 13th. So we got to actually get 13th on this. February. We're going hard in 20, 2018. That's right. I'm going to see how many people I can make mad by telling them the truth. All right. Done? Done? done. Shane, you're done? done? All right. As always, thank you very much for um, watching us. Please do share this with people that you dislike as much as we do so you can irritate them with me and Mike's voice. <laughs> we appreciate all you that joined us at work. We won't tell your bosses. And as, as always, keep an eye out for the red Chevy truck. Peace out. Peace out.